Uh, okay, great. Uh, namaste, everyone. I think uh, uh, welcome to another video by the party. I think we'll be talking uh, finally about uh, Barni Nakshatra. We'll start with the UG's uh, prayer act. Go ahead, UG. Thank you. Hi, all of you. Um, first, before beginning with Yamraj uh, invocation mantras, um, I wanted us all to just sink in uh, to the, the beauty of Yama and dispel some of the superstitions about the invocation of Yama so that we can all do the prayer properly. Um, and please, if you are able, please face south, if you are able. Um, if you're going to have faith in the superstitious part, then I would ask you to consider to also have faith in the part that uh, describes that every being has a certain number of heartbeats. If we do this prayer to Yama, it's not going to invoke some inauspicious thing in your home. That's impossible. If you, if you believe that part, why not also believe the part in the Purans that says that Chitra Gupta is counting the breaths and the heartbeats and so on and so forth. So let's bring forward the auspicious relationship to Yama, the healthy relationship to finalizations and endings and um, the beauty of what this actually is. So I have a beautiful form of Yamraj here. Um, if you're able, able, please face south. Yamaya Namaha Pritantam Mahisharudham Dandahastam Bayanakam Palapashadharam Krishnam Dhyayetakshinadit Om Namaya Namaha Mahishatta Yamagacha Dandahasta Mahabala Rakshatvam Dakshina Dwaram Vaivasvatta Namustuti Om Dharma Raja Yanamaha Om Rumurna Priya Yanamaha guys. Um, I was just going to give a small introduction to Yama Dave, um, just holding uh, who he really is uh, and moving forward before the gentlemen uh, bring their uh, pieces, uh, profound pieces on Parani Nakshatra. Just wanted to honor the Devata, uh, Yama, uh, is not commonly uh, brought into the home, so on and so forth. So therefore, I just wanted to open properly. Now, these mantras, uh, this is the Deepam Mantra, and uh, this Mrutyuna, Pasha Dhandabhyam, this one can also be done in the same meter on the right Trayodashi, okay? 
this one here is the names of yama. So these are just mantras that um, I wanted to give all of you. And um, let's for a minute contemplate how present yama, uh, this, this essence, this intelligence is in our daily life, literally from womb to tomb, uh, he's present and visibly present in all of this world. Everything has a time limit. And this time limit is actually uh, celebrated in the Qurans in many cases. There are cases where it's not, of course, but there's, there's stories where there's a, perhaps a time period where Yama is doing tapasya. And what happens is there's no death during that period. And the devas and the uh, even Mahavishnu has to come to him and say, please, you know, return to Buloka because it's just filling up and getting so heavy with life that um, there's no freedom. She's so heavy. She can't bear the weight of everything multiplying and not uh, ending, not not. <laughs> Not there's no transformation happening, it's just stagnant. So he returns and it actually lessens the burden of the earth. Um, so, um, you know, we're born and, and henceforth the symbol of Bharani nakshatra, which is the nakshatra belonging to Yamraj, um, very beautiful nakshatra. It's called the star of restraint. And I'm sure the gentleman will talk more about this. The symbol is a downward facing triangle or yoni, the female yoni. Now that area in a female's body is full of restraint. You have the uterus, it holds the baby inside of it. So it is the seat of reincarnation. It's nothing but this. The freedom ends the minute you come back into the womb. <laughs> so the, the whole thing um, is restraint to the body. And we're gonna discover that every story that goes along with Bharani Nakshatra and Yamadev is actually more about freedom and release <laughs> versus restraint in a human body, <laughs> okay? So the, the womb of the female is this place of restraint. <laughs> you are now back in the womb, you are restrained to this body and you will take a human birth in which you have this time limit going that you are born, you grow, you hit, you hit a peak of growth, just like the cycles of the moon. If you look down here at the cycle of life, it, it mimics the moon exactly. It's a tiny little moon all the way to the point of growth, and then you start waning again. That's why moon is janma. Moon is not how you feel. That's all the planets are associated with feelings. Moon is janma, <laughs> cause of birth. It is the womb. Okay, so, so from womb to tomb, a human being's experience is this growth, waxing and waning. And so Yamha has this special job, according to the Qurans, of... <laughs> recycling, <laughs> you know, putting you back in a womb, an appropriate one, some kind of divine intelligence that makes sure that things go where they're supposed to go to balance the whole system. See, Yama is always thinking about the whole system and its balance, not just one individual. So it's very distinct in the stories of Yama. He's being fair to all living beings, not just humans. He's actually very compassionate towards all living beings. There are stories where he delivers heavy sentences to a human because they've harmed animals, for instance. So his intelligence is working on this level of, um, you know, weighing, so to speak, uh, and balancing out the so-called negative positive energies of whatever you've invested in and then delivering the fruit of that. So of course, naturally he's feared, but perhaps not 
for the reasons many of us are so um, inclined to fear him. If we should fear anything, perhaps it's birth. I don't know. <laughs> All the gods tend to uh, be fearing <laughs> taking a human birth in these stories. So um, I have some just little points about Yama here. Um, that um, some some of you may or may not know. Um, he's referred to as Kal very commonly, even more than Yama. You, you will see his name is Kal. And there's even stories that he, um, you know, like Brahma and Indra come to him and they, they have this tendency, both Brahma and Indra, they have this tendency to think that they're very profound, that there's no one like them that they're original. And uh, Yama, Kal, he laughs. He's like, I've, I've eaten many of you. His response is, I've eaten many of you. So he's even given permission. He explains this, as a matter of fact, to Indra Dave, that he's given permission to eat even Brahma at the end of the, you, at the end of the cycle, Mahapralai. So he was literally seen as Kal itself in all of its material and sukshma or subtle forms. Kal has many levels. Time to us on this earth is very different than time to the devas, time on those different lokas that um, the Puran speak about, the time is different. So he actually is a preside, presiding not just over material death on this in this world, but he's actually given this very special seat as closing every every form of time. Because time is a fire, it's consuming everything, it's eating us. It's Kal Agni, it's a form of Mahakal itself. So um Yama Dev. This is a big devata. It's a lokapa. He's a lokapala. We just did the mantra to him as the guardian of the south. And, and we did a second mantra that invokes yama. Okay, so that next one is Agni, um, Agni Puran, and it's the invocation to yama. Um, so he is a, a very big devata. And uh, he's been somehow a little bit reduced in some modern stories but uh, you know, more or less, he was referred to as Kal. You very rarely hear about his Shakti, Dumorna. Um, Dumorna is, uh, you know, Dum. We have this smoky colored, or so. So this is his Shakti, and there's lots of places in the in the Purans that describe his loka. Some some call it Yamapuri, Yamlok. And he's got all kinds of names. And there's 28 levels of what people are referring to these so-called punishment levels. <laughs> people get into all this speaking about hell and all of this, which I will not get into here. But interestingly enough, there's 28, just as there are 28 nakshatras. Um, so uh, it's a very fascinating thing. They go into detail about all of those things. And um, I believe the influence of monotheistic and Abrahamic religion has touched some of this, is my personal feeling, um, because some of it seems as if it's explaining it. Uh, if you go back in more ancient view of a job of a Yamdut or a job of Yama, it's to actually clean and purify all the debris off from that life. So say to burn it off, perhaps that whatever that life was, so that the consciousness is it, free of all of that, uh, you could say muck, um, all that stickiness. And it was to burn it off, whether it was good or bad. Okay, so that's very clear in some of the older yogic understandings, both good and bad are binding to the consciousness. Uh, so it, it can't be free under the restraint of both sets of good and bad. Um, but then it slowly devolved to almost this punishing thing. Oh, this person who doesn't pay, this person goes to this hell. And it's strange how it's devolved. So I won't comment on that. 
Um, but there's lots of descriptions on Yamapuri and all of this that you can read. And Chitragupta is a big part of this. Now, um, Yamraj himself, you may know, he took the birth as Vidur in the Mahabharat, who in Vidur was a man of extraordinary intelligence. So if we want to understand Yama, let's kind of wipe what we think we know. Because if you look at Vidur, he was the actual incarnation of Yama. Now, does Barani Nakshatra manifest as uh, horror screenplay writers, uh, horror actors, uh, people who have a connection to death? Perhaps yes, and I'm going to explain that. So yes, all of those things are very true. I have many cases of that to present to you. However, if we want to know who Yamraj is, let's refer, refer to the nature of Vidur because he was said to be the actual incarnation. Now it's interesting because Vidur was always trying to direct Dhritarashtra in the right way, <laughs> which was nearly, it was impossible. It wasn't gonna happen, but he still gave it his all and he was highly intelligent. He was one of the, the uh, most intelligent Maha Mantris, advisors that ever lived. So this is a good life to study if you want to really understand Yamraj. Um, and I have a little bit about how he got cursed to take the human form. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there's also in other stories like when Shiva destroys the Tripura, the, the cities, Yama is said to become the tip of his arrow. Okay, so there's a lot of little subtleties like this, and I just have a few points listed for you guys to do your own research and investigation um, into Yama, and you'll get more of a sense of what he actually is, who he actually is. Okay, so in Tibetan culture, we have the Bardo Thardal. Um, it is a book of the dead, and it's to guide you um, away from delusions at the end of life. It's to so keep you sober <laughs> from drinking your own delusions at the end of life because there's nothing more powerful than human emotion as far as veiling clarity. Now that does not make human emotion some evil thing. You're supposed to be dry of emotion like a, you know, a desert. No, as a matter of fact, be wet with a certain kind of emotion, be drunk with a certain kind of feeling, like, like bhakti encourages, right? Um, this is a different thing. But when, we are, uh, when we're so um, stuck, okay, to certain perceptions that cause grief, that, that inevitably cause grief, this is what this book is addressing. Not that it's evil or dirty to be a human being, nothing. Let's, let's leave all that, guys. But it's, it's a book that's very fascinating. Um, this is the Tibetan version of Yama here with his Shakti, uh, quite fierce looking. <laughs> um, and he said to appear in all different forms, okay? So, uh, so this is an interesting thing for those of you born, born under Bharani Nakshatra or that have that inclination to know more about Yamraj, Yamalok, what it what it is in its subtle essence, because there's no way to put this into words. It's almost something you have to see, you have to experience this. <laughs> so um, the way to start doing that is immersing yourself in the essence of something. We're so used to learning through boob, which is what I'm doing right now. Presentation, words, information. Information is not knowledge. Knowledge is experience. You have to know it for yourself. You have to become it, actually. So the forms of knowledge we gain through guru and shukra, we barely even exercise those two in this society. Guru is dhyana. Meditation, dhyana. Real meditation, though. This is not just, oh, I'm going to sit and close my eyes. And shukra is union. The norm, yoga karaka. So when you become something, this is the jnana shakti through shukra. So you can read and saturate yourself in the energies, but then you have to go into meditation. You have to go into becoming. You have to make it your life path. Okay, so some of these things, just saturating yourself in the energy is better than getting all these words. 
Now, Varahi Shakti is the Shakti associated with Yam Dave. I just wanted to honor her here. For those of you who feel more connected to Shakti in general, and it's easier for your uh, heart to connect, um, just know that she is the Shakti that is commonly associated with Yama. Um, same thing, Yam Lok, all the things are the same. And Devi Mahatmyam, she very much takes this role. Um, so uh, just for your information, she would be the Shakti. I'm just going to move through this, guys. Now, it's commonly said that Rahu is born under Bharani Nakshatra. Um, it's one of the nakshatras that he's given. And there's, there's two others, but I'm just only going to focus on Bharani now. And if you read his names, you'll immediately see that he's called Mesha Rashi. He's associated with Mesha. He's associated with Simha. So you automatically have two hints there that two of the birth stars, one of them is in Mesha and one of them is in Simha. So now, interesting with Rahu's story, I want to take a different spin on this, guys. So please clear your minds just for a minute. And don't assume anything about Rahu, or just for a minute. So <clears throat> Rahu really, as I've said in other videos, really doesn't do anything wrong here in this story of Vishnu and the Dev Devas and it was actually the devas and Vishnu that were deceiving everyone. Okay, so we have to remember to look at all details and not just be so quick to say this is good and this is bad. It destroys intelligence. We really want to sink deeper and in, perhaps even into the intelligence of the heart. The heart's actually very still. I'm not talking about your emotions. I'm talking about a place. There's a place you perceive here <laughs> okay it's the best I, I'm sure some of you know that so sink a little deeper than just all this thought and just perceive the story for a minute so Rahu is the guy this he's not tempted by Mohini like I've said before he's sober actually he's not tempted by Vishnu is Mohini that's a really big deal first of all because even Lord Shiva was intoxicated by Mohini. So Rahu was very clean of that intoxication. Interestingly, he was so focused on justice, a <laughs> key word here, justice that he did not, was not attracted. He was so upset <laughs> over the deceit because Vishnu was giving the Rakshasas the alcohol and deceiving them. <laughs> He couldn't get his mind off of the justice. This is a big word with Rahu, justice. All these social justice warriors, um, Martin Luther King, all these guys that are actually genuine social justice movement leaders, they always have a powerful Rahu, okay? Remember, Yama has a theme of justice going on. So it's immediately we can point out that. Now, not only that, the intelligence it would require to see through Vishnu's disguise. I want you to contemplate that no one else could. He was so clever that he was able to see that this was Vishnu. First of all, he was free from the desire. So this focus on justice allowed him to stay sober. <laughs> Is this okay? So then he does, he takes a position that he's not ready for, meaning that he's a little childlike. He takes this position in front of Vishnu. I mean, the audacity of this, that as if Vishnu's not going to recognize him, that he can disguise himself from Vishnu. <laughs> um, and of course, the sun and moon point him out because they have their rightful place. This is a deep story, guys. At some point, we can go into it. This portion is very deep, um, but let's just stick to the parts that's relative here. So if Rahu, um, if Rahu was that, you've got to think about the kind of intelligence that's there, okay? So just hold that thought. Think about how intelligent Rahu must be. Out of all the grahas, how intelligent he must be. Okay, so then we go to 
this Mr. Ketu, who happens at the story, right? The body gets separated from the head. Now, moksha karka, we always hear this, but Ketu isn't always spiritual in a chart. Those of us who've done many charts know that. Where is this moksha karka coming from? Where is it called mo moksha karka? What is he liberated from, guys? Just look at the picture. What is he free of? Just look at the picture. One of you answer me. Just like a child would look at it. What is he free of? Head. His head. head. <laughs> See, moksha karka means get the head off. Get this thing off. The thing that thinks it's so intelligent. The thing that thinks it's more clever than Vishnu. The thing that thinks it knows justice better than Vishnu. Okay. The thing that thinks it is so clever, it can figure out all secrets, has to go. That actually even includes justice. <laughs> justice is the biggest, uh, biggest illusion. I won't say more, but moksha karka means he's free of the indriyas that think they know. Where are all the indrias? Where are these indrias concentrated? The head. They're concentrated in the head. <laughs> we have the feeling, sense of feeling, right? Sparsha, right? With the sparsha in the skin. But every other sense is literally in the face. Taste, scent, sight, shabda hearing so get the head off and then this is moksha <laughs> this is moksha karka throw the thing as far as you can from you so that intelligence is really valued in this world so therefore rahu is called boga karka sort of a boga karka okay but he the key here is he gets beheaded he actually gets separated <laughs> from his body he has a kind of death he has a kind of death and he becomes immortal. He interestingly becomes immortal. Now, um, this whole thing with Barney, uh, Rahu being born in Barney is very fascinating. I'll tell you guys, there are numerous stories of Barney people having to care for parents that have no sensory perception. This is so common. Um, and it's usually the parent may be a Shravana which is interesting because it's Vishnu. <laughs> um, it's been a fascinating theme I've perceived. Um, I've seen it over multiple charts and there's even uh, charts of celebrities. You guys know that I won't do charts of living people typically. So the charts I have that we're gonna run through really quick are not living people. I will not speculate about their lives. Um, so I've done his chart before. I didn't post it here. You guys all know I like him a lot. I'll just, for people who haven't seen it, he has a Barney Lugna with Ketu on the Lugna. Now, this man had deaf parents, and he took care of those deaf, deaf parents, and that's what made him so good at theater, and he became the infamous character of Yama, what everyone fears, death, all the hidden things. This guy had such a character that he was known to save young girls from producers raping them. This is Yama. He, he was known to actually take them into his dressing room and hide them. Okay, so even though he's got this frightening, I think he's beautiful, to be honest. <laughs> he's very beautiful. But most people wouldn't see a face like this and think it's beautiful. But he, he also saved his son's life by bringing him back to life. He, his son was born dead with the umbilical cord around his throat. Yama's Pasha, right? This Pasha. So um, he put him on freezing water and he started breathing. The doctors had declared him dead, everything. And his son went on to also do these kind of movies. Very interesting. So this is a Barney Lugna, another with a cluster in Barney, infamous character like Yama, again. Um, very long-lived career in playing those kind of roles, Vincent Price. 
Another one, Dario Argento. And a lot of these people ended up getting their success in the Dasha period, transit periods. When, when Barney was triggered, um, the writer of uh, Ghost um, uh, and uh, Jacob's Ladder in this country also, like uh, there's so many people who deal with this so-called horror. You've got to think of this stuff, even though it scares a lot of people, it's focused on freedom from the body. So we have to remember there's this whole theme going on of the head coming off and entering the realm of the sukshma indriyas. So there's some theme going on with the sukshma indriyas. A lot of these movies even have psychics and this and that. So it's all about this entering realms that are frightening to the average person, but it's letting go of this uh, material and seeing that which is beyond that, okay? So please don't be afraid. Jim Morrison, another Barney Moon, break on through to the other side. This is one of his most famous songs, okay? So these people are very commonly doing these kinds of things in their life. Now, the last thing I wanted to close with is how many yogis now we hear Patanjali Sutras, yamas and niyamas. Yama means restraint or, or rules, you could say guidelines. Interestingly, in Ashtanga Yoga, <clears throat> with these rules and the, the uh, five yamas and niyamas, they're all linked with the Gyanindriyas, the Karmindriyas. They're linked with the Panchmaha Bhutas. So there's always this theme of five, 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 five. Okay, so very fascinating theme going on with the senses and the restraint of the senses. So if you line up the yamas with the panchmahabhutas, the jnanindriyas, the karmindriyas, if you start really looking at this, each one of the yamas and the yamas deal with one of these guys. And they're getting you back to your sukshma indriyas if you follow the rules. The rules are actually to give you freedom. So this is the very interesting thing about Yamdev is that by this so-called restraint and rules and laws, they're to break you out of a certain kind of prison and release you into a bigger ocean of freedom to get you to those sukshma indriyas. So the story of Rahu Ketu becomes very important to understand why is he Moksha Karka once he's free of that head. <laughs> so the Yamas and the Niyamas are actually masterfully designed to tackle this whole thing of the Indriyas and the Panchmahabhutas and the whole way that these things become subtle. So we have a natural, you know, yogi, Shivananda. He's a Bharani Janmanakshatra. He lived his whole life um, doing uh, yoga. And um, the science of pranayam, pranayam is very yama. We see the word yama again, very much um, the use and the restraint of the breath. Uh, so, so all of this is a yama thing. You're going to see a lot of these guys. This is his kundli in case you wanted to study it. You're going to see a lot of these guys have certain themes, okay? And by the way, you would think this is some horrible conjunction, see? So I always tell you guys to stay away from, uh, as a matter of fact, stay very far away <laughs> from uh, the kind of astrology that puts you in a, a box. We, we want freedom here. We want to see things as they are. People will try to say that there's a Parivartana, so it helps this. There's many cases where there's no Parivartana, okay? <laughs> Nothing, right? So um, this is a Gyan Yoga. Whenever you get Mangal and Malefic, you get Malefics conjunct in Karak Rashi, it's actually called a Gyan Yoga. And he was, you know, very much inclined towards that in Raj Yoga. Okay, another one, Ramana Maharishi, very prominent Mangal in Bharani Nakshatra. And when that Mangal was activated is exactly when he had his death experience. So I'm sure one of the guys will talk about out of death, out of body experiences, near death experiences, all of the altered states of consciousness. 
All of these things opening us up to the sukshma sharira, the subtle body, have to do with bharani. So Ramana Maharishi had literally even someone this elevated, the timing on this earth, when you take a physical body, it still shows. It still shows. The cosmic law even still shows in many cases like this. Uh, so his, I have the transits in blue here. So the transits are in blue, and this is the exact, this is the timing of when he had his experience. So Mungle had entered Barney with his natal Mungle. And uh, so it's a very interesting study, guys. He got his first spiritual awakening during his Shani Shukra, um, according to the system that I use, guys. I use a different year length. Um, but Shukra wakes up Barney. So whenever you run a shuk, you know, Shukra Dasha, you have a planet inside Barni Nakshatra. If you're in Prayantar Dasha, uh, Andar Dasha or, or Maha Dasha, that planet will be, you know, like a wake. So it, it'll give its karma palam at that time. So he had his first awakening at that time. It's um, just a fascinating study for all of you. Okay, guys, that's what I've got. I'm going to hand over to the next person. I don't know how to stop. <laughs> so, yeah, I think how do I stop? On stop sharing. If you move on the bar, you can click on stop sharing, actually. Okay, great. Yeah, that was great, UJ. I think that was amazing information. Uh, thank you for sharing all that. I think, Dr. Pai, do you have any comment or something upon UG's thing? No, I think it was um, a very, uh, you know, the, the detailing, EFG, I really liked about the detailing that you brought about uh, Yama. And um, I, okay, when I said Yama, there was somebody who just popped yeah. up. Yeah. Yama okay. Yama. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, yeah, one of the themes that I was very intrigued by uh, when we talk about Yama, I'll talk more when it comes to uh, my turn comes around. But one thing that I want to say is uh, Yama, in my view, is uh, our Vedic Adam and Eve, which is Yama and Yami. They were the first people to probably learn about death and rebirth. So you can see that the the Abra Abrahamic religions talked about mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, and you can see uh, Yama and Yami also probably shows the same principles because there was no death before Yama. So he was the first person to learn the path. I can't hear anything. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah I had the same issue also with Joni when I did our interview with her just now couple of days ago and so i i can't even hear anything there's something i guess there's something wrong with my what did we just talk yeah. about guys about not hearing oh uh, mercury <laughs> retrograde That's no not that dealing but... with some major... yeah i can't hear nothing <laughs> yeah i okay. mean my everything is fine my speaker is fine um i don't know what i'm doing wrong I... here but uh um, okay. you guys Why... talk i'll try to figure out if i can start hearing you once i start yeah. hearing you then i'll know yeah so, why don't you message him and say that he can probably join from his uh you yeah, know, cell phone, yeah. maybe from the cell phone and while he figure this out maybe that can help yeah be interesting yeah go ahead uh, dr pai yeah so um and there is a, something magical about Bharani that I, I also wanted to talk, but uh, let me talk once Aditya finishes. But I want to say something about many of the stories where uh, Yama is involved. See, most of the stories have common themes. Oh, Dr. And... Pai, say it. Just say it. If it comes okay. to you right now, just say it. Okay. See, there are a couple of stories that I... See, I'm very uh, intrigued by the stories of uh, Yama. And one of the stories, uh, I'll give you two or three stories, which you will see the same pattern. Okay. Now, uh, one of the story which he also touched upon is between uh, Yama and uh, the protagonist, uh, 
child which is Nachiketa, which is from uh, Kata Upanishad or Kata Upanishad, where this boy uh, goes to Yamaloka and uh, Yama is not there. You know, he's busy and he's not, not there in Yamaloka. So this boy waits without food and water for three days. And Yama, when he comes back, he says, oh, you young boy, you have really got a lot of willpower because you've been here for three days and you've been waiting here. So you can ask for three boons. So the word is what I want to say, three boons is something which is very important. I will explain that. The first thing he asked for is uh, to grant a peace of mind to him and his father, which means when he say father, it means to everybody in his lineage, that is all his ancestors, when he says father. So basically what he gives him is Atma Jnan, self-knowledge of the Atma to give him peace of mind. That's point number one. Second, he says, I want to know the secret of the sacred fire ritual. So then Yama gives him the knowledge about fire, which is the next nakshatra, which is coming up is Agni. Okay. Uh, Agni's nakshatra, which is Kritika nakshatra. And the third that he asked uh, Boon is about knowing what happens after life, which is of death. So he asked these three boons. So I want to, you know, Aditya, I know we'll cover this, but I want to say that the three boons are connected to the three stars which Barani nakshatra is associated with. Okay. And I'll repeat this again. Uh, you will see this. Okay. Then the other story which comes to is uh, Yama and uh, Savitri. Now, the story goes that there is a very interesting, see everything is in codified language, okay? So Savitri's father didn't have any children. So he does a, a, a yagna as per the sages during that time they advised him for 18 years. That is called a Savitri Yagna. And Savitri, which is, uh, you know, the concert of Brahma, Brahma which is uh, Saraswati, she emerges and uh, she says, you will be gifted, you know, gifted with the child. So 18 years, remember, it is the Vimshutri Dasha of Rahu. 18 year Yagna. Then, you know, she marries an exiled prince called Satyavan. Remember the word exile. You know, that means you are an outcast. You have not, you have been exiled. So remember all the stories of where exile happens, which is very common in all the itihasas, which is, you talk about Ramayana, there is exile. Mahabharata, there is exile. So this king has been exiled and she falls in love. But Narada tells that he is short-lived. And probably is short-lived when he was a young prince. Uh, so, go. okay, I think we can hear. He's speaking, but. Right, so the thing is, Yama comes and takes Satyavan and she follows him. Again, she asks, you know, he says, except for Satyavan, you can ask for three boons. Now she really out, outwits him. You know, what was the first boon? He says, give my father-in-law the kingdom back that he has lost. The second wish, he says, let my father have hundred sons. And the third wish, which really stumped Yama, was he says, let Satyavan have 100 children. Now, this is impossible, right? He, Yama had said, don't ask for Satyavan's life. Ask me any other wish. So if Satyavan has to have 100 children, he has to come alive. So do you see the how she outwitted Yama? Again, three boons, okay? Okay, so then the next thing what I saw is the story of Yama and, Yama and Markandeya, Rishi Markandeya. So Rishi Markandeya was uh, destined to die at the age of 16 years. Now this word 16, again, you have to take into consideration. I'll talk about one more story of Yama, which again brings this. So Markandeya Rishi, an exemplary son who, you know, who was only destined to live for 16 years. And then we know the story of how he saved, saved by Mahakal. So number 16 is also very important. The next story is Yama and, uh, you know, there is the story which is 
uh, which we also celebrate is called as Yama Deepam, which is also called as Yama Dvitiya. This happens to coincide with a day which is called as Dhanteras. Dhanteras is when we bring a lot of gold home. Okay. So, Dhanteras. Bhai Dush. Ah, yeah. Bhai Dush. Yeah. One day. One day. Yeah. Dhanteras is the next day. So on the night before the Dhanteras, which means uh, next day is Dhanteras, you know, Tritiya. So Bhai Dush is one day before. So. No, 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 no. Yamadutiya is two days after the uh, new moon. Okay. Yeah. Bhai Dush, right? That is what it is. Yeah, Bhai Dush. Yeah. Dhanteras okay. comes, then Narak Chaturdashi comes, mm. then the Avasya comes. Then Pratipada comes and then Dvitiya. So the last five okay. days, the last day of the Diwali. Okay. So Yama Dvitiya is the second uh, day, right? Yeah. So Yama Deepam is uh, falling with Yama Dvitiya, I guess. I guess, yeah. Oh, no, no, guys. Let me share my screen. <laughs> what is, there is some sound effect. I'm sorry. It's, it's a lot of lightning and thunder here. No, I think that's a couple's uh, thing, actually, yeah. Okay, so here, I have it. I even have the mantra okay. for it. So, okay. it's a Trayodashi, is the Deepam. But there is also, you guys are right about the, um, you know, the second cycle, and there's also a Chaturdashi, or, or sorry, a Chaturthi. Okay. Chaturthi. There are, there are two, then. Okay. There, there are three. A three. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so there is not a, there's the not a uh, chaturdashi and yeah i have them listed here dan trayodashi see she's put uh, trayodashi naraka yeah. chaturdashi and yama dutiya this is it because this is actually the mantra for it yeah correct correct so this is i think is yama dutiya which is also called as yama deepam if i'm not wrong i could be you know again it can stand corrected but the story is very interesting the story is about a 16 year old son of a king called hima and he was doomed to die with a snake bite again snake is what rahu on the fourth day of his married life so what his wife does is you know she puts all her ornaments made of gold at the doorstep and she lights a lamp and the glare, because Yama comes as a serpent, as is destined to be killed by a serpent, and because of the light, he's not able to, and he's dazzled by those ornaments. Okay, he's, he climbs on the ornaments, and he sits there, and he listens to the song, which the wife is, uh, you know, singing stories for the whole night, and that is how, in the morning, he peacefully goes away. The, the time that he has to die will doesn't happen. So, something again with number 16 is coming. So you see, even uh, Markande Rishi, 16th year, you know, this uh, story also is talking about uh, the husband uh, due to die at the age of 16. So 16 Are is... connected with Jupiter? Exactly. That is what I was trying to say. Yeah. 16, if you do, if you do the, the Padma Chakra, yeah. you will see it's connected to the fourth house. Fourth house is... Uh, both the womb as well as your death, which means your, as Eve has rightfully, you know, Eve G has written there, it is your life between the womb to the tomb. So your womb is also the fourth house, your tomb is also the fourth house, your final resting place. Wherever you started your life is also Appa Bharani. You have started your life in the, in the womb, which is your umbilical fluids. And finally, what you do is after your life is over, you burn your ashes and you put your bones and your ashes again in a, a, you know, a river so that you can get another life again. So it is for your journey to continue your water to water. So you are born in water and finally your asthya, which is your bones and your ashes are also put in a river in water so that you, are, you can get another rebirth, re reincarnation. So I feel there is some things which is astrologically also connected. Look, even the fourth Titi is called Rikta Titi. And it is also connected to Yama, Rikta Titi. Ganesha, of course, Lord Ganapati. And Lord Ganapati also had his head severed. Rahu also had his head severed. You know, the whole story of what he was saying, this is also called as the Janma Nakshatra of Rahu. Now, in 
ancient Tamilian astrological scriptures. This is not in the modern sciences. Rahu is said to be an incarnation of Shakti. And especially the Shakti of Kali and Bhadra Kali. So Bharadi Nakshatra is nothing but it is the generation of that primordial energy that is created. And this is also a place where Saturn goes into its debilitation. Saturn debilitation in the esoteric world of uh, South India, it also suggests that it is nothing but Sati where she jumps into the yagna of her own father and she self emulates herself. And after that, 51 Shakti Peetas are formed. So Bharani is connected to all the 51 Shakti Peetas. And out of those 51 Shakti Peetas, one of the most prominent Shakti Peeta is uh, Kama Rupa, which is called as Kamakya Devi Temple at Guwahati Assam, which is uh, the primordial representation of mother, which shows her fertility, her creative powers, and also it is the womb, it's the menstruation that you see, Kamakya Devi. So I think Kamakya Devi is the primordial goddess which is connected to uh, Bharati Nakshatra and you know Kali as well as Bhadra Kali because Bharani is nothing but what is called as Ichcha Shakti. Ichcha Shakti means what is that you can manifest through your desires and your most creative powers that you can put into action is Bharani. See, whenever I started studying about uh, these nakshatras, I usually, uh, you know, was fascinated whenever I talked to people, you know, when I went to Tamil Nadu, there is a saying in Tamil Nadu as well as in Karnataka. That means in Tamil, they say, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I, my spoken Tamil is very bad, uh, but I will try, you know, Bharaniyal Pirandaval Dharani Alward. This is Tamil. Kannada, they say Bharani Avanu Dharani Alvanu. What does it mean? That means somebody who is born, both these languages, somebody who is born in Bharani Nakshatra will rule the world or will have control over the earth. This is Prithvi Tattva. Because Kamakya Devi is a representation of the fertility of Mother Earth. And it is Mother Earth which, you know, is the reason, the primary reason that people do not know is the reason for the birth of Sri Krishna. And this nakshatra is also called as Krishna in the ancient times. Besides, it was called as Apabharani. I've given you the reason. It was also called as Krishna. Krishna means somebody who has even Kali is called as Krishna because she's got a slightly, you know, hue which is a beautiful darkish hue that she has. And that's why even Krishna has an influence of Shani on it. So why, do you know why Krishna was born? Because if you know the story, there is a story. Krishna and what is the reason for the Mahabharata war? which is again Bharani, which is about death, right? Because there was a genocide that happened. That was, you know, half of the population of this world was reduced suddenly because of this war, which was called as the Mahabharata. And remember, the Mahabharata war was also fought for 18 days. Let's not forget about that. The number 18, 18 days it was fought, which is Rahu's number again, which is complete purification, cleansing, and see, even Bharani Nakshatra is associated with all the fertility symbols, not only what we are seeing here, but even in the pagan rituals as well. See, the sun enters into Bharani on 20th or 27th or 28th of April, and it is there till 11th of May. We are doing this video almost when sun is going to move out of Bharani and go into Kritika. 
Now, during this time, there are two important things that are happening. In the pagan rituals, see, when I was studying in uh, Edinburgh, they used to celebrate the, the, the Celtics or the Celtics. They celebrate a fire rich, uh, festival for fertility because it is also about the summer coming up after the spring and they dance and they have a Carlton Hill. They go there and uh, people dance and they also light a fire, like a bonfire and they dance and there is drumming that happens. Okay. It's a pagan ritual. We also see in India, we celebrate what is called as, as a Labor Day, 1st of May, when sun is in Bharani Nakshatra. People actually take it as a holiday, but actually what is Labor Day is when you have to go for a kind of a spring cleaning. You have to remove things that you do not need. And whatever has come to an end, you need to dispose of from the house. That is the whole purpose of having this day off, which is called as Labor Day. Why Labor Day? Labor is connected to Shani. Shani is labor. Shani gets uh, debilitated here. So when sun is passing here, Labor Day is celebrated in India on the 1st of May is said to be Labor Day. Okay. Now, Krishna, I will see this and uh, then I will, uh, you know, end this because I think it's been quite lengthy. Okay. Uh, Krishna was, uh, Krishna was, uh, he's become the emperor. Okay. I told you. Bharani Avanu, Dharani Alavanu. He has no Bharani Nakshatra. He is a Rohi Nakshatra. But remember, it is a Mitra Nakshatra, Bharani, for Krishna. So, one day, you know, uh, Balram and Krishna are in an important meeting. So, their Dwarapal, which means somebody who is a guard of the palace, says there is a very old lady who has come and she says she has a great problem. And she, if you know, if you can help her, that will be great. Now they say, there are so many other people, you know, go and send her somebody. Um, he said, okay, I'll go and I'll get somebody else to go and attend to her because we are very busy. Balram and Krishna are in a busy debate because they're ruling, you know, the kingdom. So after Five minutes, the soldier again comes, the foot soldier, and he says, Dwarapal comes and says, Oh, we have tried to help her, but this is a very unique problem. We cannot help. So Balram is like, What is a unique problem that nobody in our kingdom can help? We are all the Yadava clan and we are warriors. So we should be able to help her. He says, unfortunately, I think this problem is for real because I tried to help her. I couldn't help her. I've asked many people to come. And so Balram ragingly says, okay, I will go. Krishna, you sit here. Let me go. Balram goes. And after some time, Balram also comes in. He says, I don't know what is this problem of this lady. I'm not able to solve this. Especially Balram means somebody who's... So Krishna says, okay, she wants to see you. So she goes out. It's an old lady who has a basket over her head. She's saying, you know, I'm unable to put this basket down. Can you please help me put this basket down? Nobody can even pick that basket or shake that basket. Krishna also tries and immediately he realizes who she is. He's, he falls and he says, I recognize who you are. So she's none other than Bhudevi. She's carrying this thing. She's saying, I'm having too much of weight over my head. Please reduce this weight. Okay. That means she's also Bharani. Bharani means she's bearing the weight. Just like how a womb, you know, buries, bears the, the child for nine months. How a mother bears the child. The same thing. Earth is also bearing all of our weight. We have a uh, we uh, we want to repay our mother, isn't it? That is why we do what is called as pindadan. Pindadan is uh, done by putting three rice cakes with sesame seeds, black sesame seeds on the rice cakes. Because what is pinda? See, we are all born from mammals. We are all mammalian. That's why what is called as pinda pinda is mam birth through the womb is called pinda. We are all pindajas. Ja means born from. If you are born from an egg, you are under ja. If you are born from a seed, which is like trees, you are called udbija. If you are born from, uh, you know, like an amoeba or a microorganism, you are called as shvetaja, which is born from the sweat. 
So we are actually paying homage to three wombs that our consecutive generations have come through. The womb, we are respecting the womb here with the three rice cakes and the black sesame seeds are karmas which are attached to us. Okay, so this means Bharani Nakshatri is what we are actually worshipping with these three rice cakes, which is the three generations, the three stars that we have connecting with, the three boons that we are seeing in most of the stories. Okay, so I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a very fascinating nakshatra. I can see that there is also one more final point because, you know, I, because I've spoken for so long. This nakshatra is also not only considered to be with, the, uh, you know, considered to be with the, the Hindus, but it's also, I feel there is a connection with most of the Abrahamic, Abrahamic religions also, which believes in baptism. See, what is baptism? Baptism is a ritual of purification, cleansing. It's, a, it's like saying it's a rebirth or also initiation, isn't it? Where, you know, it is said in certain denominations of religions, they pour water on the head of the child three times, or it could be, you know, we sprinkle the water, aspersions three times. Or you also take the complete body is dipped in water and is bought out. It is like that's where the, the whole, um, uh, there is this uh, idiom, right? Born again Christian. This whole thing is about, you know, where you are, a baby is passed on from a womb-like structure, which is like in the form of a fish. It's like your rebirth is happening here again. And water has been used. Even Sikhism uses this, the same thing of baptizing. And it, it is called as uh, Amrit Sanskar, which means what they do, sugary water is given to the child and the rest of the water is drank by the mother before, you know, when the baptism is happening. So water is an element which is used for baptizing. And Appa Bharani is also about the principle of uh, baptizing. And it is also a kind of a, see, many people also get baptized in their adulthood, not in the childhood. Do you see what I mean? So there is kind of a rebirth that is happening. It's like an initiation that is happening. Okay. So um, I think these were some, and one more thing I wanted to say is Bharani, I feel, is not only about uh, the chapter closing. It's also about new beginnings. It's about a new chapter starting in your life again. Okay. It is not the end. It is also, we say the end or we say death, but it's also about new beginnings. And that's why I feel there is some connection because see, Yama comes sitting on a water buffalo. Okay. He has two messengers apparently, two birds. One is a pigeon, the other is the crow. And when you enter the Yamaloka, because he's called as a, like EFG has already said, he is the regent of the southern direction. That's where the Yamaloka is. Okay, he's also called as a Lokapala. He's also called as a Dikapala. And in Buddhism, he's called as Dharmapala as well, which means he's holder of Dharma. Okay. And also, he is uh, in uh, Mahabharata, he is the father of uh, Yudhishthira, Dharma Raja. Okay, Dharma Raja, and some also believe in the traditions of Mahabharata, Duryodhana's birth star is also Harani Nakshatra. Dr. Paiji. Yeah. It's interesting because what I was talking about, how justice is the final illusion. You remember what happens with Yudhisthira at the end? I renounce Dharma. His brothers in, in, in Draupadi have gone to. <laughs> to hell. He sees Doryodhan, Dushashan, these guys, and they're in Indralok. <laughs> and yes. I mean, so many things. there's more than that. That's the basic, but this is key here. This is this thing, this whole thing that we get caught up on with right, wrong, justice that perpetuates life, actually. <laughs> Okay, it's a very subtle point. It's very deep. The other thing um, I just wanted to mention, and maybe you can expound on this, 
you had mentioned about Shani's Nietzsche. Now, um, two things with that, maybe one of you will have an insight. Shani is natural, Ayushkar. He mm. gives long life to things and he also slows things down and restrains them so it's just a fascinating thing to contemplate there because he's ucha and swati where we have vayu so he's going to measure that vayu You're, he's not going to let you let out too much of that uh, those winds he's going to give some like shani's names they're all about measurement restraint restriction moving slow, right? So there's something there happening. There's also a saying that uh, when Shani is Nietzsche, uh, he becomes Mahakali in the chart. So I just, when you were saying this thing about Padra, Kali and I was just thinking, because I've heard this. Anyway, if you have any point on that, I just wanted to throw that out there for no, I think that's very uh, fascinating that you also bring uh, this up. And I was also seeing in your slides, Evji. See, there is also a story between Yama and uh, Rama. Now, when Yama was waiting to come to take you know, Ram with him, Yama couldn't take Ram as long as Hanuman was there with him. Hanuman is prana. Prana Shakti. He represents Prana. If he's not there, there is no Prana because he's a Vayu. Vayu Putra. Vayu Putra. Pavana Putra. Pavana, yeah. Pavana Sutha. Harama. He is Prana Devata. So, you know what Ram did? He took his uh, ring and he put it inside a crack. He, he, he created a crack in the earth and he put the ring and he said, Oh, Hanuman, my ring fell through. Can you please go and get it? Hanuman jumps into the hole and he keeps going. The ring is falling and he goes in. By that time, Ram, you know, is accompanied uh, to the Sarayu River with Yama and he is left. So Hanuman is very, very grieved when he comes back and he says this was his technique of saying otherwise. As long as Hanuman is there with Ram, Yamadutas or Yama even cannot approach him. So Ram knew that. So there is again, see, a lot of stories you see with, uh, you know, Rama. And, uh, you know, all of these stories with Yama is very, very int intriguing when you go into the depth of it. And one more last thing I want to say and we'll, uh, I will uh, close. See, the surprising thing uh, that I see in many of the stories where we talk about, like, for example, Draupadi. Okay. See, Yama Raja and Yudhishthira have a dialogue. He says, what is it that you see the similarity between Draupadi and can you give me an insight about who she probably could be? You know, when Yamaraj gives him the story of uh, Savitri and Satyavan. See, Savitri also has emerged from the fire, which means Savitri Devi has come, which is Saraswati has come, and she granted a child, which was named also Savitri. Draupadi is also his birth is through fire. Through the Yagna, she was born, Draupadi. Okay. So they had, a, you know, a son was born and Draupadi was also born. Now, in the other theme, you see, what is Sita Mata? Sita Mata is, uh, she's the daughter of Mother Earth. Again, there is a connection with Bharati Nakshatra. Okay, very strong connection. I'll leave it to you. And she's also got a connection with fire, Sita. That's why she's also called as Janaki, because she comes from Janakaraya. She's also called as Vaidehi. That's her name. Okay. Because the clan was called as Vaidehas. Okay, but she's a, but whenever Ram wanted to go after the golden deer, you know what? She becomes Maya Sita, which means she goes into the fire. She's, that is her camouflage. She's the, she's born from Mother Earth. When Janakaraja was plowing the field, that is when she found her. 
but she goes and takes she hides in the fire so fire and earth have very strong connections that i feel with this nakshatra it's not only the water element but also the fire and sita also has bharani she has borne a lot in her life today nobody would call their daughter as sita isn't it nobody will name their daughter as sita even though she is a goddess she is goddess lakshmi herself anyway i think i have to end now because i can keep on going like this but i want to say if you really want to understand the beauty of this nakshatra then listen to yamuna uh, uh, yamashtakam yamashtakam is savitri's thing to yama that she is trying to you know win over him through a intelligent you know dialogue okay and yamunashtakam because that also came from my mouth yamunashtakam because yama has said anybody who goes and worships on the bank of yamuna those souls i'll definitely give them mukti and they will be jeevan mukta jeevan mukta means when you are alive you are getting so ancestors are you know whoever have not gotten things yamuna devi can give you because that is the blessing that is received okay so i think my my session is done unfortunately i have uh, superseded uh, you know aditya he wanted uh, me to carry on so i just went on with the train of thoughts that i had but aditya over to you anybody has anything to share yeah, dr pai i just want to say it was interesting you mentioned uh, the uh, 18 year length of uh, rahu as being the 18 days and so that was very interesting how the potentially jupiter the mahadasha in terms of uh, 16 and all that so that is a very interesting thing to think about further i think so i thought that the idea was very fascinating one more thing i want to give you there is rahu who is watching watching this entire mahabharat do you know it was not actually rahu but it was a one headed only the head was watching the entire mahabharat babruwan babruwan babraliga babraliga yeah babrik Babri, 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 Babri. Yeah, yeah. So he could only sit on a mountain because he was so powerful. If he took any side, that side would the other side would be defeated. Babri was so powerful. You should understand the story of Babri. So what did you know? What did he he goes to? Uh, he desires to watch the entire Mahabharat, the eighteen day war which was fought. He wants to see. You know what Krishna does? He cuts him his head off and says, "Go and sit on the mountain and watch this." So it is like a his head was watching the entire thing, and he could tell what was happening. Finally, they go to Babrik and they say, "You know what do you think about this war? Who won this war?" The you know, the Pandavas go to Babrik. You know, Krishna says, "Okay, I am not anybody who can say anything." you go and ask babri because for 18 days he's been sitting on the mountain just his head and is watching this entire war so he can be the best judge so when the pandavas go to babri and ask you know what babri says i could not see any warrior in this entire war it was only krishna against the kauravas the entire war was fought by krishna and everybody think it was their actions if not for krishna on the pandava side that war was so babri was seeing that in every killing that was happening on the battlefield krishna's hand was there invisible hand and everybody was believing it was them arjuna was so ghamandi that he was egoistic that i am the greatest archer so all the pandavas thought they had won but babri knows what is the truth Dr. Pajji, that's just interesting with the whole uh, the spotting of Mohini and the spotting of Krishna's game. It's something about seeing into the game. Uh, the scene. So I feel there is something with the you know watching something getting manipulated in front of you, and that is why I feel Bharani Nakshatras their their you know blood boils when we see. injustice happening because other people will not see the injustice but a bharani native will see the injustice like how babri was seeing you know this was completely on one sided match because krishna was there on one side krishna has given his complete narayani sena to duryodhan 
but he won you know one sided one man who could win the entire match for you imagine so this is why i say this is all maya so babri could see through the maya bharani nakshatras will also will be able to see and that is why they will stand up for justice they will stand up for righteousness they will stand up for dharma because is dharma raj because he saw through chaya's ploy that is why he was given the title by his father vivaswan aditya marthanda that you should be called as dharma raja because you saw through the ploy you could see through bharani nakshatra see through that's why they will stand up for injustice they would be kind of a spiritual warrior that's why you see them being very prominent in places like law you know law and order and enforcement of laws just because this is yama all right i think i have to uh, you know stop this discussion from my end i otherwise you know i'll hijack this thing like a babrik who's all observing everything so aditya over to you you are the the next surya you are the marthanda uh, many things uh, because there are so many points i was just keeping quiet today and i was just listening somehow this bani nakshatra made me to keep quiet i don't know why it was something anyway so first thing about yamadeepam you were right it is tantra trayodashi that's what yamadeepam is yamadutiya is also something so both days this yama so i got confused with yamadeepam as yamadutiya but yamadeepam is celebrated on trayodashi on the 13th day so you were right dr pai the other point is sita and dropadi you mentioned and you know the whole reason of rama and was sita and the whole reason for mahabharata was also dropadi <laughs> so so coming out from fire they were acting like something like a kali shakti you know like like the destruction of everything and uh, kali that means mula nakshatra there is something interesting maybe i will point later in the slide something with bharni and mula of course rahu ke uh, you can say rahu ke to connection mula is but it comes again anyway then i was i was thinking about this chopping of head is coming often today with rahu heads chopped babri has chopped of course i don't know whether i should say this but even sacrificing animals see we never stab animals in the abdomen or something like that you know we always chop their head why this chopping of head you know i don't know why we should discuss this but but that is always there in the in the system head chopping Okay, yeah, uh, good. Even in uh, Kali's sacrifice, uh, a buffalo is head yeah. is. Uh, even as... Well, guys, I... in the Purans, in the Purans, actually, uh, you guys didn't even know this, huh? Okay, so Yama is given that role in the sacrifices. If there's an animal to be, he's actually given that role. So Aditya Ji, that's why you're mentioning it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. He's yeah. given that role. It's actually a certain title. He's the one that carries that out. Oh. So yeah, always chopping. See, you can kill animal in any way, but always chopping the head, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh anyway, I don't like meat, so I'm okay. I I can say that. <laughs> Other thing which you said, no, uh when Babrik said that it was only Krishna fighting, you know, when Krishna died, and arjuna was not even able to win war with uh, those uh, simple yadav men and he was surprised like uh, krishna died and then he went there and you know yadavas were fighting and all and then he was uh, arjun was fighting with them to stop like why are you people fighting af after the death of krishna and he, and those people defeated arjuna so arjuna was thinking how this is possible i have i have destroyed the whole kaurava army everything was like i am so good archer and now i am just able getting defeated by this few men who are not even experts in fighting and then he realized that it was not he it was the power of krishna that uh, that made him to win and all so a lesson to learn uh, i think whatever we do it's the is the blessing of the almighty probably and sometimes many times it comes you know sometimes a problem comes you do a problem in my field that's why i'm saying about problem you do sometime and sometimes you really think that how is it really me or is it if something can any time can happen tomorrow i can meet with an accident had a head injury and forget everything 
no, all born, can, you don't know. So is it really me? One has to think. Anyway, some just some thoughts. So yeah, just thought to mention those points. Anyway, uh, should we start any, any other points? No, go ahead, Aditya. Yeah. Okay, so where is my slides? Is this how you share this? Mm -hmm. Share screen, okay. Do you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, Doctor of Stories, Dr. Pai already mentioned. Uh, this is a nice Yama. It looks very nice. You see Yama Danda. I think even if you also mentioned uh, in a mantra, carries that Danda. And he also the noose which he has. You know, that's, oh, Mr. Cat came in the picture. So yeah, talking about Bharani, of course, the Nakshatra in Aries is a natural first class of the Kalpurush chart. All the padas of uh, uh, Bharani Nakshatra comes under Aries sign. So first house things becomes important. Again, first house is what? Again, see, we were talking about head. We were talking about face. We were talking about what to say. <laughs> Chopping of head and also first house somewhere. Uh, so all these qualities same as uh, Ashwini. And there is a connection between Ashwini, Bharani and Kritika. Uh, as uh, Dr. Pai said, yeah, um, um, this, uh, because Kritika and Akshini, Lord is also Agni. And this Yama and Agni are very, uh, what you say, very much related. And a lot of hymns and praises and Rig Veda are related. So somehow they are like coming in pairs. This is a symbol of 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 uh, of uh, uh, Bharani Nakshatra, which is the vulva or the yoni or the female reproductive organ. Now coming to astronomy, let's talk about astronomy. It is three stars, as Dr. Pai, three boons, three stars, which is 35, 39, 41 area. It is now the stars of Bharani Nakshatra are not that very much prominent. If you really see, if you see, I don't know how many of you have seen Aries, but very dim stars. Out of 35, 39, 41, it is a 41 area it is, which is the prominent star or the Yogatara, which comes at exactly 24 degree, 21 minutes of Aries Nakshatra. Now, if you see the precision, we all know this point, the first point, the vernal equinox, the um, shifts basically. Right now, it is at the junction of Uttar Bhadrapada and the Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra. Uh, it is during this period, 1600 to 700 BC, the equinox point was in Bharni Nakshatra. Now, this is the period when it is late and post Harappan period in India. We all may be knowing about Indus Valley civilization. Where is the where did the Indus Valley civilization developed? And it was and, and I think the story, the, the everyone will know the answer. It developed along the uh, river Sindhu. You see the again the point of river is coming into the picture the water the river bharani you know bharani the word bharani bharani if you know in hindi it is also you know that achar uh, what is that pickle you keep pickle in that that is also called as bharani or yeah, that that's achar right. is kept in a bharani actually in Manjalam, yeah. uh, we call that as bharani so bharani is nothing but something which holds now womb also holds a baby so it's bharani is just not think like nakshatra name but it's also something which can hold a bag or something which holds it can hold a baby it can hold a it can hold a pickle and uh, and there's one more saying in hindi have you heard jc karni vaisi bharni have you have you, have you, have you heard as it means actually in english as you sow so shall you reap so bharni is also what you are going to get the fruits may be probably so that's what bharani is like you are going to reap as you sow that's that's the meaning the reaping so again as you sow so shall you reap means what somewhere the picture of law is coming and we know bharani is what lawyers and all dr pai was saying and he's yamraj who is the lawyer of yamloka shani shani is what basically the lawyer in in astrology so you see the word Jaisi Karni, Vaisi Bharni, the Bharni. So there's something law coming into the picture. 
holding coming into the picture, water coming into the picture. So these all things, when you say Bharani, remember. No, it's an interesting, and, Aditya, as you mentioned, uh, when Indus Valley was going on, so when the equinox was there, the energy of that uh, Bharani was very strong. So of course, uh, the civilization around the river had to develop, right? That kind of thing. Very interesting, actually. Very important. Indus Valley, Nile, you know, uh, Nile, uh, Nile yep. River. Yeah, Egyptian, yes. Yeah. Uh, and there are some people, Colorado River in US. Of course, I will talk about that too. Uh, okay, not tra talking about tra sun transit dates. Aries, it goes, the nakshatra span is from 13 degree 20 to 26 degree 40. And the sun transit date, Dr. Pai also mentioned, from around 27th April to 10th May. Plus minus one day in those dates can be possible. That is where the sun transits. Right now, the sun has just came out from Bharni, has gone into uh, uh, Kritika. Remember, now note, at this time when we are talking, I don't know where is Aries. Aries is going to enter uh, Bharni. I don't know. It, at, definitely it is in, I don't know, it is in Ashwini, but I don't know where is Jupiter's exact degree. Jupiter is in Aries, actually. No, uh, in Ashwini, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's correct. So it is going to enter in Bharni, probably. That's why Jupiter is asking us to do something on Bharni, I guess. <laughs> In the sky, this is what it looks. See, when I said uh, there are many, and there are some many stories with uh, Yama associated with Agni, Yama, uh, and there are some many examples where I see this this Bharni or the Bharni theme pl plays, and I will show in the slides, subsequent slides, plays along with uh, Ashwini Nakshatra too. So there is a connection between this Bharni playing with Ashwini as well as with the Agni, which is Kritika. So these three are always come together. And you will see how does this will come in the coming slide when I give you examples of some people charts and all. Okay, so this is the, your Ashwini Nakshatra. This is the Bharni Nakshatra. And this is your Kritika Nakshatra. As shown even I, if anyone remembers, I have shown this slide even in the Ashwini video. So this red one is the Bharni year. Yeah, I was just thinking why I selected red. Red is also color associated with Bharni, if you remember. Somehow click me. Anyway, let's talk about uh, uh, because Yama is nothing but he is the family or he is from the sun. We know sun has got two wives, Sanjana and Chaya, and Sanjana gives birth to Yama, Yami, which is also Yamuna, and Ashwin Kumaras. And the Chaya is nothing, uh, gives is the mother of Shani. Remember, who is the father of Sanjana? Twasta. Okay, and we know the story of how last time we explained about uh, how, how Sanjana was uh, having trouble with the heat of sun. She left away and then she made a clone of Chaya. So cloning was there. Uh, I think this is the first story we hear about cloning and all in uh, Indian uh, Indian um, stories. Anyway, so remember, Twastar is a, becomes the grandfather of Yamadev, maternal grandfather, somehow. Okay. So this is where the, I want to show the lineage of Yama from where he comes. Even in the Shani's mantra, now it is clear that he is a brother because uh, when you say Om Nilanjan Samabhasam, Ravi Putram Yamagrajam. So Shani, when we address Shani, it is called as Yamagrajam. That is made up of two words. It's called uh, in Marathi, you know, I remember street teacher taught me, my, my Marathi teacher. Yamagrajam, Yama, it is called what? Samas Dwandva. I, I think something she used to she used to teach me 1997. Oh my God. 25 years back. So it was like, and definitely one mark question will be coming in the exam. So I have to read uh, by hearted very well. So it's a Yama plus Agraj. So it's a Yama Agrajam. So it's the what is Yama? Yama is Yama. Of course, Agraj means the I don't know from where the word Agraj is. Agraj is the is the really the meaning comes the elder brother or uh, one who comes before Yama. Can be because Agraj, when I hear, hear the word Agraj, I, I come it, from in my mind comes the word Age. Age, you know, we say in Hindi Age. So, who is Age of Yama? Who is before Yama? Is uh, Mr. Shani or Dr. Shani, probably. Let me, let me give him PhD degree. So, he is Shani. Dr. Shani is nothing but he is the one who comes before Yama. So, that's why Shani is considered as the elder brother of Yama. So, that's why Yama and Shani both are brothers. And both are related to somehow with lawyers and all those things. You see how the same family. I think son has, you know, I think that's the problem. Even Indian fathers want their son to be, you know, S-O-N. They are son to be something. 
I think the same story is happening here. Probably Mr. Sun or Dr. Sun, S-U-N, wants their children to become lawyers, I guess. He made both of his children lawyers, I guess. <laughs> Yama as well as uh, Shani. Now, sh the word Yama, I was not knowing, it means twins. Now, why twins? Because Yami or Yamuna is a twin of Yama. I think he, he, he pointed out, or someone pointed Yama, is the different words are there for Yama, like Kala, Dharmaraj. He's also called Pashi. Pashi is that noose. He carries that noose. He, many he many recites. Names. Thank you. He has many names. Yeah. Many names, many names. So I just put some few. He resides in Yam, Yampuri. He's the king of the dead. He's the first mortal. And again, he's associated with two dogs. They say Sharvara and Shyama. And those two dogs guide people to Yamloka after death. Some things. Again, when it comes to dogs, see, there is a connection. What is the uh, animal of uh, Mula, dog? And Ardhara also. Okay. In Garud Purana, Shyamala is considered as wife of uh, Yama. And Yama has also got three other consorts in uh, Mahabharata, which is called as Hema, Mala, Sushila, and Vijaya. So uh, he has his own family. And there are daughters of Yama too, who got married to some king and then they have. So there is a lineage of Yama. Yama is also a family man. Uh, not like us. Not like at least like me. So he has his own family. The story, I think Dr. Pai said many stories, but Dr. Pai, you should say the story, or someone should say the story of Yama and Yami too, probably. Because I, that is something, Dr. Pai, because I had three stories, which Dr. Pai mentioned everything, Yama and Nachiketa, the story is said by Dr. Pai. And there was also Yama and Sabitri, the story is said. Uh, but people did not mention this story of Yama and Yami. Did Dr. Pai, would you like to go and say? No, I think Aditya, you should go ahead. Uh, and I will say something about Yama and Yami once you finish with the story. Okay, so Yama and Yami are twin brothers. And the story says Yami is a brother, she is the sister of y Yama, but she wants to have relationship with Yama. That is what the story is. And uh, she tells, no, we are we were twins. We were there in the womb together. Why not? We could live together and all. But Yama is restrains himself, saying, no, we should not do it. I think Yama knows the secrets of genetics because he knows that if, if your cousins are married, you know what problems happen. Somehow Yama knows that secret, I guess. So he restrains. So that's why the star of Bharani Nakshatra is also called as a star of restraint, restraining yourself. And uh, there are uh, there are many stories actually. If you really read in Puranas, and then it was said that no, I won't uh, marry you, and then then Yami left uh, him in anger, and then she comes after that, and then she finds that Yama is sleeping there, and she is like, okay, she gets angry before why Yama is sleeping, but then she finds that the Yama is no no more. There is no he died actually. Okay, and uh, she is crying and she is weeping because his brother is dead now. Then other gods came into the picture and consoled Yami. And it is said that uh, uh, how we could um, um, like make her normal now. So the, it is said that they created day and night, basically. And as days and nights passed, her tension relieved and um, um, people on the earth got day and night. And then Yama got his heaven abode and and he was the first mortal to travel and all that stories are there. So this is one story where sister is coming and trying to have sexual relationship with the brother and the brother is restraining. That is the more that take that take that one line from this story. Nachiketa, the same thing happens where Yama gives, as Dr. Pai mentioned the story, he is giving all the boons, but uh, he, he does not want to give the secret of what happens after the death. But then somehow he gives that. Sabitri Satyavan also the same story happens. He wants to take the uh, soul of uh, uh, Satyavan, but Sabitri stops. With all these three stories, what do you, what we learn? There is some problem happening in execution of job for Yama. Yeah, he is not able to do it. There is something which he wants to, but he is not. Be, some problems, some issues come now and then. 
So problems related to executing work, job issues can be possible, delays can be possible, tough, sometimes tough situations these people may have to be where what to do. He has got some problem with Yami, sibling issues can happen. Issues with siblings can be a major deal. I'm not saying sexual issues, something like that, but any issues, maybe maybe money, money issues. Money issues are very common with siblings, correct? Something where some, I don't know what is the, you know, in Hindi we have a term, dharma sankat. Dharma sankat, I don't know the exact word for that in English. A something, a situation comes where there's a problem where you have to compromise on your values or something like that uh, with person has to face. And why this happens, and note, exe problem in executing work and all, because if you see the work, who is responsible for work? Saturn. Saturn gets debilitated here at this point, 20 degrees of Aries. Is it because that's why Saturn is testing you probably? I don't know. Um, just a point to be noted, maybe people who are strong with Bharni or people who have Lagna in Bharni or Moon in Bharni or some like that. I'm not saying everyone will have that or something, depending upon their house, where Bharni is placed. Accordingly, you get it. So think about those. This, so all the stories are fine, but see what you learn from the stories. And as Dr. Pai said about three boons coming, three stars, three boons, maybe something related to three. Maybe I think Bernie people should look back into their life and see what it is and comment on it probably and tell us what it is. But it looks like with all these three stories, where the where Mr. or Dr. Yama has a problem basically what to do. And uh, somehow, but but one good thing I like is Yama is very compromising. See, he, he compromised with Nachiketa, he compromised with, uh, with uh, Savitri. And uh, finally, I think uh, he was also a man of character and with Yami he did not. And then he left his body, went aboard and all. So I feel that Yama is a good guy. We should be friends with him probably. Maybe. Anyway, that was the thing. Um, back to our normal. Uh, the star is called the star of restraint. We can see the why that why this is called the star of restraint. A uh, power to take things away and move on. Foundation above removal of life from the body. Okay. Foundation below carrying the soul to ancestor realm to be the lord of ancestors. Shakti's upper bharni shakti. Power to take things away and move on and result of Shakti moving on to the next world. So there's some transformation from one to the other, one world to the other, going from one level to the other. It's always, I think from all this, we can see that there is also some trans, because we know some there are some serious transformation nakshatra such as uh, Ardra, Mula and all those. And even Bharni will be also one among them, I guess. Purusharth is Artha, Gana, Manushya, Trimurti, Vishnu, animal is male elephant, bird as crow. Again, uh, it is said that uh, Yama also has uh, crows and pigeons are associated with Yama, they say. Pigeons, I don't know how come, but I learned, <laughs> was looking at the slides today. In fact, it was interesting. This is the, I should say, this is the, this is the Nakshatra video, which I'm least prepared because I have so much work. I have to grade my exam. My everything is due on next two days. <laughs> Just in few hours, I made. Again, see the problem with work happened. Overload of work. It, because I will at least make two, three days before. But this time it was few hours before. <laughs> I don't know why. Last minute. Every time this is maybe. And Yama is also considered as uh, Yama, Chitragupta and all his Yamdutas are nothing. But they are withholding the secrets of nature, they say. Chitra Gupta. Now, Chitra Gupta, it is a nice story about Chitra Gupta. Now, I, I, of course, we are talking about Yama. It so happened that Yama and Yamdutas were doing wrong. I think Yuji was mentioning they were doing wrong in their analysis. And, and so Brahma was a very unhappy. He said, well, he comes to Yama and said, you should be careful. You are not taking proper accounts, probably. Yama said, how can I do this much work? You know, I am alone. <laughs> what can I do? You are giving. See, again, work. Yama is also bothered with work, you know, and he complains to Brahma, basically. Then Brahma thinks about it, and I think he thinks, and uh, in his mind, in his secrecy, in his mind, he makes, a, um, he gives birth to Chitragupta. Now, why Chitragupta? Chitra means mind. Chitra. He makes a picture of that person in his mind in secrecy. Gupta. Gupta means secret. So, that's why the two names, Chitra plus Gupta, Chitragupta. 
So he said, now he is your assistant. Now he will help you. That's why Brahm, uh, Yama got assistant of Chitragupta. Now Chitragupta, Yama and all those people are very good in keeping secrets. They said they know some secrets. See, that's why Nachiketa asked uh, Yama, the second boon of to know the secret behind that fire ritual. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the secret is why I was telling about secrets. Okay, because yeah, see, that's the secret. Of course, when you deal with burning, some issues with work can happen, you know. Uh, and the other one secret, which probably we should give that whenever we do any nakshatra, that nakshatra themes play so beautifully in our lives. Uh, I think back in behind the scenes, we don't say, but that's how nakshatra creates that energy probably. Uh, so that's the secret all videos till now we have done i think that energy of the nakshatra at least i have seen in some point or the other i think may, all of you must may also have seen so that's the secret for today so nakshatra becomes active anyway uh, the tree is the amla tree or the indian gooseberry we call is a tree associated with this uh, nakshatra now, amla has got anti-diabetic, anti-microbial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. It increases the immunity. It's, amla is considered to be the richest source of vitamin C. Okay, it increases the immunity, fever treatment, viral, fungal, and bacterial infection. Now, remember, it is said that it is also for useful for treating sexual related problems, especially in males. If you have low vigor, it is good. It has got aphrodisiac property. So, good for sex life. Again, sexual organs, you see those connection there. In case of, in females, it is said that it's helpful in the case of fertility, helps to build that uterus muscles. So sometimes the muscles are not that strong, they say, and it is very difficult for conceiving. Uh, amla can be good for that. So I want to point the story of how this amla tree, which is the tree of Bharni Nakshatra, is connected with the sexual organs and uh, especially having, uh, having the aphrodisiac property and all those things very good connection with sexual things anti-aging it is said as anti-aging anti-aging means what aging reducing your death relate with that store uh, deity or deity of yama here it improves voice and sore throat i was thinking why voice and sore throat maybe i don't know yama bharni nakshatra or aries is your face correct maybe i don't know throat but it says that it also improves voice and sore throat Right. I think but, uh, it's a Venus rule nakshatra, right? So Venus is also ah, second lord and all yeah. that. So probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Venus is also for singing and all, probably. Yes, good point. That is the thing here. Now, if you say that Bharni, you have four padas. The fourth, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth padas are basically associated with Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. Since all the padas are in uh, Aries sign, the lord is Mars. The nakshatra lord is Venus for this. Remember, Venus. So Mars and Venus, again, as Sandeep was just pointed out, Venus. The first pada is Leo, uh, so the Lord becomes Sun. The second pada is Virgo, becomes Mercury. Third pada is Libra, Venus. The fourth pada is again Mars. So if you see these planets here, lot of Mars and Venus. Again, what is Mars and Venus? Mars is male, Venus is female. You see, again, Mars-Venus connection here. So Bharni makes sense of sexual things and all those things because it's a very high, high having high energy of mass and venusian energy and especially the third pada third pada looks like more dominance of venus the fourth pada looks more dominance of mass probably so again the mass venus connection is clearly seen in this bharni nakshatra it has got both energies of mass and venus our male elephant is considered as the animal symbol of uh, bharni nakshatra now, what are the regions associated with Varni Nakshatra is one is uh, this Ganges Delta, Delta region. We were talk talking about uh, those the Delta plains of Nile of, and this is considered as one of the most fertile land. Gan this, this Delta region is, see, if you ask me the population of India, where is it's most, it's along all that river edge, you know, Ganges, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and all. I think, I don't know, if you really do the population density, Bangladesh is much more popul density, population density wise, it's much more than India, I guess. It's a small country, but I guess Bangladesh has got more population density, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong, considering the area and the number of people. So what is Bangladesh? Bangladesh was also India once upon a time, correct? And 
very fertile land. You can grow jute, you can grow rice, paddy and everything. And see, fertile, again, fertility of human beings and fertility of land, both. It's, when you say nakshatras and all, you just don't connect with human beings, just don't connect with uh, reproductive organs of human beings, also connect with the land. You know, woman is fertile means what? Uh, it can give birth to a baby. Uh, land is fertile means what? It can give birth to many crops. So again, in all these fertile lands, delta regions, it will be very fertile. We have the delta region, Ganga Brahmaputra Delta here. We have Nile. Uh, in US, we have the Mississippi, correct? Mississippi Delta region. I don't know, it's in Louisiana, usually? Maybe it has to be in Louisiana region. What Do you think it? Louisiana? The Mississippi River? It runs Mississippi, through I, Mississippi. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it runs through the Mississippi. You know, Togi J, interesting on the point of the elephant, you just went through it really fast. They have uh -huh. rituals for death. They oh, have, yeah. they have just, graveyards. Yeah, yeah. Out of all animals, they recognize death, they grieve the dead, they come back, I think, annually, and, and, and they will play with the bones. Bones. They will actually exactly. get the scent of the bones to remember those who have passed. And elephants yeah. don't forget things. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that as a very good point, good point. interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. But Mississippi River uh, is, oh, and also the, uh, before elephants, one more thing. The females also have birth rituals. So they'll like actually stand around each other support each other's birth in the birthing process the males will guard them from a distance so it's just interesting the things around birth and death elephants are very aware uh interesting so uh but the mississippi river yes is a huge river in the u.s and it it does come down through the southern states and that is all very fertile almost jungle like in some areas yeah it's, it's again it's the bhani fertility theme playing there again you know for the for the land for the for the earth basically now some people i don't know anyone who knows this this person here is kartiki gonzalez and she made a movie recently you know i think won an oscar correct uh, the elephant yeah, that's right. yeah. whisperers and uh, elephant whisperers again you see the word elephants i was like elephant whisperers okay Let's see what's because I saw the word elephant and then she has got anything in nothing in uh, Bharni as such. Uh, but I don't know where is this Venus. Venus is Venus looks like uh, I don't know. Uh, Ravati is know. the elephant too, Togi G. Ravati, like, that's Ravati. what I pointed Ravati. Yeah, Ravati, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Forget about the ascendant here. Uh, time is unknown, but at least, but but all these three planets still they are in the Libra sign. They may be definitely aspecting. Uh, uh, Barni Nakshatra there. So and Revati definitely Rahu Rahu in Revati. That's not going to change. It is twenty seven degree exactly where most uh, your Venus is exalted at that point. Twenty eight degrees correct. So uh, of of Pisces. So she has got maybe some connection with. I think she somehow knows that she has to make some movie on elephant and then she made it and make became famous probably. <laughs> okay. The other thing, this guy. J. Marion Sims is called considered as the father of gynecology. Gynac, female organs, again, you know. And he has, because here you see, I don't, I, I had a trouble today, like I wanted to find something in Bharni, but I was not, generally this doesn't happen to me. It's like I will find this thing. Today it was like, I want to find something, but I'm not getting somehow. Uh, I did something. Can, can I just say as a female, the this guy came up, they're basically torturing. It's not like, I know, I know. It's yeah, not it's like a right. positive. I wouldn't relate this to. I, I know, I know. That is some... <laughs> I just yeah. have to say, um, I would not relate this to a brilliant yeah. fellow. This guy was really horrible. So um uh, I don't know if it would even have a relationship with like Barney as far as like like midwives and things like that. Uh, when when Dr. Paiji did his class, I don't know if you remembered how many people brought forth like charts of doulas and people who help other people give birth and people who sit by the like hospice care, people who sit 
by people when they die, like Ray Vitti, same thing. Um, but then a lot of people that deal with like giving birth or, or helping people giving birth, but I don't know about this guy's, uh, I'm just letting you know, probably not. But Tavia, remember it is death too. It's a death <laughs> team too in, in Burney. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So because when I was reading it in Google, yeah, it, it was mentioned about those, what you're saying. But remember, Bernie is birth as well as death. A tomb and womb, both. So, so I think this is the tomb guy, not the womb guy, probably. I think he was just uh, the torture guy. <laughs> I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. But he's considered as father of gynecology. I don't know. Like, okay. So I thought maybe Gynac should be dad. Then I saw this guy's name, but there's nothing in, but only moon in uh, 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 sitting in Vishaka at 26 degree and aspecting, uh, aspecting. So a lot of aspects. Then I said lawyer. Okay, anyway, lawyer should be there because, you know, and then Mr. Ambedkar last time also had it in Ashwini, but he has got Mercury in Burney. And he was the law and justice minister in the first cabinet of uh, independent India during Nehru's time. So again, the theme of lawyer coming into the picture. This guy, I need not need any introduction here. <laughs> again, this is also the same type of guy, tomb guy probably. It's not the womb guy, but tomb well, guy. And you can see. Someone had mentioned a general or would become a great, it, it, Dr. Paiji mentioned uh, that. In the Arne, right? Yeah, Krishna becomes emperor or something. Yes, becoming it. Well, yes, yes, you know, whether people like it or not, it's a different. Yeah thing but that's what he appointed himself yeah so hitler right hitler of yeah. course german kaiser and all that right i think Fuhrer, yeah. right yeah that's the word Fuhrer. interesting yeah so uh, even this guy, this guy brought this guy, his yeah. downfall. i think he died in his dasha that woke up barney i think it was his shukra that took him out so those points that's actually hitler's the best chart you've got here because if you look Absolutely. It, I don't think it was Venus Dasha, of course, but it was a sub-period of Shukra. But anyway, uh, it, when his Venus got activated, it was in Zimbarani. And is that the fourth pada? I can't see that very well, but that's an Ashtamamsha pada. Uh, it's a fourth pada. That fourth pada is, yeah. So he's actually a good study for that. Yeah. So he's also considered, can be considered a small Hitler, who knows, in a, in a way. Womb and tomb, both, both. Both, both can be. This guy, uh, John Wesley Powell, he is considered as a famous geographic expedition, led a three-month river down in the Green and the Colorado rivers at the um, uh, canyon at the U.S. Again, the theme of river, you see. And uh, <clears throat> again, when I was looking, Jupiter in Bernier for him too. So reconnection with rivers, connection with uh, Colorado rivers, Grand Canyon and all those things. So interesting. This guy, I was like, because I thought maybe womb and all those things. So maybe something about IVF technology and something. So I was looking who is the person who found IVF. And then this guy's name came, comes up, Patrick Steptoe. His name is Patrick Steptoe. And with Robert Edwards and Gene Purdy, he was a time, uh, I don't know why I wrote unknown. It should be unknown anyway. Uh, but he developed IVF. Then I said, what is there in uh, Barney? But this guy has got nothing in Barney. But uh, what I see is, again, Mars and Venus is in Ashwin. As I said that, the, uh, I will tell you. Let me show you the other slide of Robert Edwards. This is Robert Edwards. Again, here, you see Venus is Venus and Saturn both in Vishaka and then aspecting. Jupiter is also aspecting uh, uh, the Barney nakshatra here. And then I was thinking, like, as I said, Ashwini, Barani, and Kritika, they go hand in hand. It's like, you know, of course, a lot of themes. Even in Rigveda, it is said that they work together probably. So somehow there's some connection with the, with, with, with those. And mass Venus again, when mass and Venus are again combined energy, it acts like, I don't know whether it's a proper to say that, but like, like a Barani nakshatra, mass Venus again. So it's, it's a birth nakshatra, or you can say male and female energy coming together. Anyway, now I was looking, people was talking about dying and all those things. You know, on what day of the week and what calendar date many people die as per the CDC statistics. I don't know if CDC so like statistics. Saturdays or something? It is a Saturday. Really? Wow. <laughs> it is Saturday. And uh, on the date, is said as uh, 26th, uh, the day after Christmas. And I don't know what is the connection there. 
26th December uh, of the, the new year. Maybe this is, I think the God wants the quota of that year probably. So after Christmas, he wants to take, uh, I still remember when I was serious 20, 23 years back, even that was 26th December, I still remember that. <laughs> so I was like, I was shocked to see that. But yeah, Saturday makes sense, you know. Uh, but again, uh, I won't take that because they said that the lowest was Sunday, the highest was on uh, Saturday. And uh, but very minute deviations in between, uh, of course, 5.6 million. Uh, they, they calculated for some 15 years uh, data and all those things. But if you take the standard deviation and uh, that error, it will it won't be that significant. But still, as for the numbers, it's Saturday. And December, I don't know, 26 December, because I was thinking what happens on 26 December? Sun is in Mula Nakshatra there. So Mula again coming into the picture, death. So maybe, maybe. And remember, uh, Mula again, Badra Kali and all that connection. When I talk about fest festivals next, we will see that connection. Uh, in Kerala, you know, uh, the Bhagavati temple and all those festivals are there in Bharni Nakshatra. So I will talk when I, when I will come to festivals. But that's how probably this these things work, probably. I don't know. Okay, sun transits from Bharni from 27th April to 10th May. So what are the festivals which we have? This festival was just celebrated Trishur Puram, you see. Trishur Puram comes when it's play, there's a place in Kerala, Trishur, and the Puram means Purva Falguni Nakshatra. So yeah, it's a festival. Has... Word for festival actually, Puram. Puram. Puram is also Nakshatra, they call it. Yeah, Puram. 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 That's when this festival comes up with Trishur Puram. I think it was just a few days back they celebrated. Yeah, I think a couple of weeks back. I think the temple is also Shiva temple actually. Famously, I think there is some Shankarajara story linked to that and all that. So all that is great actually. Yeah. Vadukunathan temple as it's called. Yes, yeah. Oh. Vadukunathan. There was a movie, correct? In Malayalam, Vadukunathan. Yeah, that's a typical that's thing. Yeah. So Trishur is considered to be cultural capital of Kerala because of the big festivals and so forth. You still have like a lot of Kerala things going on there. So, you know, so it makes sense in that also. So like Vatukunathan is like a typical cultural reference point <laughs> that wow. way. Yeah. I was interested to see the elephants here. Yeah. Elephants for sure. All Kerala, right? Kerala land of elephants for sure. Yeah. Kerala also land of elephants. And if you see, uh, even in that Assam region and all, many elephants. Oh, really? Yeah, that's interesting. Makes sense. Yeah, because always there will be some, because I follow train, correct? So right. this elephant got died with this train accident and also I will be reading whenever train accidents will happen. And yeah. there, will also, there are many elephants in that region also. So the poor elephants get hit by all those. So that, even in that region, we have a lot of elephants. And it's all jungle region, Northeast India, you know. Right. Yeah. Yama Diptya, as it's also the second which we, Dr. Pai was mentioning. Um, see, the, it's two days after Diwali. It's around Diwali time. And Diwali is when? When the sun is transiting Libra. And it's just uh, sun is transiting Libra means what? It, it's opposite to Bharni. So it is aspecting Bharni. And uh, the Yama Diptya, if you say that it's a second day after the uh, Amavasya day. So Amavasya means sun is in Libra means Amavasya also moon has to be in Libra. So generally, moon is in Libra or sometimes it can be in Scorpio too, depends upon the position. But definitely sun is in Libra and aspecting Bharni is when Yama Dvitiya is celebrated. International Workers' Day, Dr. Pai also pointed this out. It is 1st May. 1st May is when exactly when the sun is transiting your Bharni. And uh, connection with Saturn, debilitating there, we discussed about this. If this is the time when Buddha... Also, Buddha Jayanti is celebrated. Now, Buddha Jayanti is celebrated on Vaishak Purnima. Vaishak Purnima means Vaish, the Purnima of Vaishak month. That means the moon has to be in uh, Vishaka Nakshatra. If the moon has to be Vishaka and it has to be Purnima, means sun has to be in Bharni. It is clear that otherwise you won't get Purnima. So that's why Buddha Jayanti is celebrated. Now, why is this Buddha connection coming here? You see the story how it is very similar to Nachiketa. He wants to like give up everything, doesn't care about that. He wants to have the higher knowledge of going eternal, getting the eternal knowledge, how to move out of all this material and 
enter into spiritual world and all those things. So very similar thing. He can be considered as mini Nachiketa. Who knows? So again, Buddha Jayanti. Again, transformation from material to spiritual. Again, another festival of uh, Kerala, Yaswati Kavuti Indal. I don't know how to say that name, but uh, it's uh, Kurumba, Sri Kurumba Bhagwati Temple in Kodangalur. Kodangalur. Yeah, the Kodangalur Bhagwati, yes. The Kali Temple, yes. I may talk about it again, but yeah, great, yeah. It's a two-day festival, one in Ashwini Nakshatra, one in Bharni Nakshatra. Yeah. Said in the Bharni Nakshatra is the birthday of Badrakali. So the story of Badrakali comes into this picture. And Badrakali again connection with Mula probably. And then they will be like having this. What is this? This is called Velichipada or what? I yeah, know. it's the, the sword. The, of course, the shamans, right? Uh, the trans, uh, trans induced shamans, usually females. Men can also be, you can see a male also. Usually they wear red actually. The moment they wear red, it's like they are goddess thing actually. And then they have the sword in their hand. The sword will have bells also. That's what you see. It's a, and then yeah. they hit their head, correct? They will yeah, hit they hit the head, yeah. They, and they, when they get in trance, also... yeah, so they, they try to hit the head and all that. So people try to stop them from killing themselves, you know, that kind of thing. So like, uh, that head is coming to picture. Again, mini Rahu. Yeah. They are like same. Yeah. The Vishnu yeah. is not coming. They become themselves Rahu again. <laughs> yeah, Hitting exactly. their head, yeah. their face and all the blood will be coming. At... It's, yeah. Yeah, I've seen those. Actually, yeah. Chinna Musta here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's also possible. Definitely, definitely possible. Chinna Musta again. He said he has no head. Correct. That head is yeah. for Chinna. So, yeah. So, with all this, what we have learned, we have Barney, gynecologists, fertility doctors, river delta researchers, lawyers associated with Barney Nakshatra, fertility, other sexual issues may be possible. Job issue can be possible. Last minute things, job issues, delays. So, Barney natives should plan accordingly. Maybe instead of taking two days, you take four days and plan accordingly so that your main, all the jobs are done properly. Family connections, lot of karma with some families, things can happen. Sibling issues can be there based on based on some money issues or who knows what issues. Again, death related because of Yama, so near death experience can happen, transformation can happen. Associated deities can be Yama, of course, but even Bhadrakali or those goddess can also be uh, connection, there'll be some connection with Bharni Nakshatra. So it's a star of free straight, Yama is a deity, Mars and Venus quality scene, trees, Al Amla, festivals, uh, many festivals we've discussed. So these are the things you have to learn and that's what my end is and I'm counting and we have, have till now, Ash till Ashwini, we have covered 57 hours, 39 minutes, 1 second. Let's see how much Bharni we will be. This time I'm, I'm sure we will definitely go, we'll pass 60 hours after Bharni Nakshatra. Still counting, still few more nakshatras left, probably. My estimate is 72 hours totally after all the 28 nakshatras, but let's see if we will hit that target or not. <laughs> counting goes on. Ashlesha, I still remember we started Ashlesha around 2017 mid. It's now mid-2023. Six years the series is going on. <laughs> so, let's see how many more years. Maybe, maybe we will complete in eight years. Rahu's Nakshatra. Who knows? Or well, right. seven and a half. Shani's Sade Sati is over then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's see. That's it. Go, uh, go ahead. Uh, anyone else? Dr. Pai, go ahead. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, whenever Aditya tries to show that last slide, I think... Um, this is the Santa Barbara of Nakshatras, which has been happening. You know, it's like a soap opera which is running for generations. Like six years is like a long time. People would, if they're still here with us, then you can see <laughs> it's the Santa Barbara. Anyway, uh, or Baywatch maybe. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we will we will break that record. Don't worry. <laughs> we will break all records. Even when you talk about, uh, you know, we talked about, I just said Baywatch, and I was thinking the color red is coming, the blood yes. red uh, yes. is something which is very much associated with Ashwini as well as uh, Bharani Nakshatra. Okay, now, um, very good observations uh, that I, I wanted to share uh, with uh, what Aditya has shared. Now, um, see, when you look at uh, Vedavyas Rishi's uh, Stotra for the Navagrahas. If you really interpret the sloka for Shani and for Rahu, you will get something more hidden which he is speaking. Okay. Now, what is the 
Shani's mantra, Vedavyasri, she has given. It is a Nilanjana Samabhasham, Ravi Putram Yamagrajam. Like what Aditya said, Yamagrajam, he is the you know, elder brother. Shani is his you know, elder brother of Yama. Agraj, Agraj means his elder. Yamagrajam, Chaya Marthanda Sambhutam. What is Chaya Marthanda Sambhutam? Tam Namami Shanesh Charam. Okay, Sambhutam means uh, he is formed from the union or combination. It is not said that he is taken birth from the womb. Remember this. So that means his birth is very celestial. Because he's Sambhutam, like how Kartikeya was formed. He is formed from the Sambhutam, which means the energies of Parvati and Shiva coming created a a fireball for Kartikeya. Similarly, here it can say that it is an interplay of uh, the light and the shadow. See, as soon as we say there is a shadow, that means the light has to be in front of us. As soon as if I turn the light towards the shadow, then there is no shadow there. So why I'm saying this is when you look at the other shloka for uh, Rahu. Ardhakayam Mahaviryam Chandra Aditya Vimardhanam Simhika Garba Sambhutam, which means he's here very specifically is bringing Garba. Garbas only people who can be born from Garbas are mammals, as I said, Pindajas. So he's given a mortal kind of thing for Rahu. Okay. He is very specifically saying Simika and from her Garba he is being born, which means that should be who can give birth, only mammals can give birth and you can be born like that. But for Shani, he is saying Sambhutam. Sambhutam means you can interpret as born, but it is union coming together of two entities or two energies. So basically, this Bharani Nakshatra, as uh, Aditya was also saying about Yama and Yami, is like the yin yang. It's the coming together of the, you know, the yin yang. The same principles you also see, but slightly very differently, which is seen with Ashwini Nakshatra. Again, the same interplay which is happening there. But their interplay is happening with the same polarities. Here, the interplay is happening with the opposite polarities. Remember, there is both are twins, but that twins are two boys. Here, twins are a male and a female. So this is a very, Bharani is a very much potency to bring the union or unification. That is the first point I wanted to make here, which is the yin yang concept, which is very popularized even in the Buddhist tradition. Now, one more thing I wanted to point out uh, and this is something which I feel most of the astrological softwares are making a big blunder. And this is my view. I can, you know, I can be wrong with this, my view. I'm just giving you the logic. For example, do you know what is Kal? How much is one Kal? How many hours is one Kal? Kal. One Kal is one and a half hours. Okay. So we have 16 calls in a day, 24 hours. Kal is Shani. See, we have two sons of Surya. One is Yama, who follows Surya. And one is Kal, who is Shani, who doesn't follow Surya. Which means he is not aligned with, you know, with the sunrise and the sunset. But Yama who follows Surya, his unit of time is called as Prahar. Have you heard of Prahar? You know what is one Prahar? Three hours is one Prahar. So we have four Praharas during the day, four Praharas during the night. So eight. Number eight is Yama. Number 16 is Shani. That is why I feel some astrological softwares are making a big blunder by, because how I got to know this is, when you go to Tamil Nadu and ask with the Siddhars, the Siddhars are saying Rahu Kal is not aligned with Surya because he is 
he he defies the devatas he is an asura he is a he is a king of uh, the, the warrior class so he is again so he he aligns with kal and kal is fixed in the tamir siddha tradition remember that but praharas is linked with the sunrise in the sunset time which is followed by yama so today what aditya was saying is some statistics is showing saturday because shani is sudden thing which is coming prahar means yama has to follow a time to come and take you but kal is not aligned with surya it is not about timing that's why we call it akala mrityu sometimes untimely death the person had enough number of oxygen the cylinder we come with a finite set of uh, breaths that we can take so which means bharani is a nakshatra which follows the laws which are human made laws who follows the cosmic laws and who rules over it varuna there are two different deities man made laws and man made traditions everything is yama which is not made by man human beings varuna makes that cosmic laws they say even after human beings die the people the whom they meet is one is yama and varuna they are the judges now after they die so that's these are the two kings that we have to meet them immediately after we leave the body no but this is this is what i was just wanted maybe we have digressed from the topic let us go to the topic whatever is bharani nakshatra because i, think, I know uh, i think it's a perfect topic dr pai because shani right shani is kala and time and all that so bharani is a nakshatra our fundamental understanding of time needs to be put in place so it's a yeah. appropriate topic for sure <laughs> because know. i also feel why this topic is coming is this is as like saying what is life and what is life after death that is the the mysticism that people want to know what happens after death and i think bharani nakshatra is giving you that inquisitiveness to want to just like nachiketa when yeah. he asked his yeah. Achiketa. What happens after death? Achiketa. You know, Eevee, that's what we talked like before, before the starting the recording. You're talking the same thing. Like, it's what are we doing? So Why? It's always so interesting. It's always so interesting. I know that we were. I know it's interesting. And one more thing. See, Yama brings you the end and your regeneration, rebirth, but. in astrology we say shani is the karmic record holder is a reservoir he holds your karmas for you yeah somebody is logging it down who chitra gupta who is an assistant or a law keeper of yama now yama after he is done with his duty he instructs chitra gupta to pass on the book to shani so that he takes it from there because he is karma karta he dictates your karmas on the earth plane which is which again we call it this is not called earth plane we call it mrityu loka your death is certain in mrityu loka huh you are you are reminding me that movie you know anupam kher and that in telugu it was yamalila it uh, hindi that movie sal that uh, kadar khan is the yamraj Asrani is the Chitra Gupt. What was that? You know, what was that movie? I forgot that movie. Tak Takdir Wala, Takdir Wala. You remember? They I lost. Don't, the, don't remember? They lost. So Anupam Anupam Kher is the Yamraj. Asrani is the Chitra Gupta, and then they lose that book. And the Brahma said that now you have to go on on the earth and find the book. If you don't find it in thirty days, you have to live there only something like that. So they come down, they find the book, and uh, this Venkatesh is the hero, and uh, it's it's that's the movie. Ravina Tandon is the actress in Hindi, so it reminds me about that story, you know, <laughs> and the fun, fun, and it's it's a nice comedy movie and all. <laughs> so people may know, uh, it's a Hindi movie, ninety ninety four ninety five, in the year ninety four ninety five it was made. So. I'll have to watch that movie. I don't remember. You know. Don't remember. 
Okay, I think uh, that was me. Anybody wants to add something because I just wanted to bring that. Okay, one more point I wanted to share with you guys because he brought about uh, the tree which is Amla. Now, there is also a festival which is celebrated uh, called as Amla Navami. Have you heard of Amla Navami? Like we have Akshay Tritya, there is also called as a day called as Akshay Navami. It falls in the month of Kartika in the Shukla Paksha and in the ninth day, which is two days before Deva Uttani Ekadashi, before the two days before that. Now, this is a very important day that many people who are devotees of Krishna, they go and circumvallate, uh, uh, you know, they call him Giridhar, right? Which means they go around the region where Mathura or Govardhan. Why? It is said that during this day, Krishna left Vrindavan never to come back to Vrindavan or Gokul. He went on his duty, which is his duty was his life purpose. So to dharma accomplish, he went to Mathura. And he never returned to Gokul or Vrindavan after that. So typically it would, I, I do not know, but typically what we say is around 10 years is when he left. Once he left, he never came back to that town. Yeah. So it is also believed this day is also said to be the first day of Satyuga. That is why it is called Sati Yugadi also. And it is uh, Satyuga's first day. So this is why this is a very important day and it is believed anybody who plants an Amla tree or worships Amla tree, a lot of stories are you get long life. And it also puts you on a path of your dharma, which means I'm not saying you'll do doing everything dharmic, but those people who feel stuck in their life, they don't see what is their life purpose. Maybe planting an amla tree can help you in realizing like how Krishna on this day, which is also called as Amla Navami, is the day when he set his foot outside Vrindavan, which is Gokul. So all that what you know about Krishna and his Vrindavan's Leela all have happened by the age of 10. And then once he went out from there, he never came back to that town. He spent all his time in Mathura and then from there, Dwaraka and other stories, whatever have come after that. So I think Bharani can bring you transformations to put you on a path of your duty. If you are not aligned, probably this is one nakshatra that you can ask. Because you have to also, if Kritika nakshatra is the first nakshatra as per uh, Atharva Veda, then Bharani becomes uh, the Abhisheka nakshatra, which means the coronation that happens, the nakshatra of Agni. Okay. Anyway, uh, Sandeep or anybody else who that wants makes, to. That makes more sense. Bharni, the death nakshatra, the last nakshatra, you know, Kritika, the first. It is the last nakshatra and it also is the end nakshatra of uh, uh, Pitriyana nakshatras. So we have two parts, Kritika to Vishaka becomes the Devayana, Anuradha to Bharani becomes the Pitriyana. Now, what many people believe is it is only how the phases of the moon are. It says that, uh, you know, again, in the Shri Vidya Upasana, they say from the Dvitiya Titi in the Krishna Paksha to Chaturdashi Titi, it is said the, the, the Devatas are drinking the rasa from the moon. They are drinking the nectar, which is the soma. Which is That's why every day you see it is depleting because the devatas are drinking. On Amavasya Titi is exclusively only the Pitris can drink. And on Purnima Titi, it is said both devatas and Pitris are drinking. And from the Shukla Paksha Pratipada Titi, the the Sushumna Nadi, which is the rays, the Sushumna rays from the sun are coming and adding the Amrit again to the moon. This is what Sri Vidya believes in, how the phases of the moon are 
So Sushumna of the Surya is adding nectar to the moon in the waxing phases of the moon. Or Nitya Devis are coming and joining the, the moon every day. And in the waning phase, each day a Nitya Devi is leaving, which is the Amrit for the Devatas. So I can be the Rahu and drink directly from the sun. Sorry? I can be the Rahu, put a pipe in the sun and drink directly. That's a <laughs> shortcut. Giving the, the nectar. Yeah, directly go to Surya, no? Get get your supply from there. <laughs> right. Maybe I, I will be chopped off by the Vishnu then. Yeah, head cut off, right? The Babri. Be... right, yeah. Okay, Santeep, I think you should go ahead. Okay, so Dr. Pai, I think uh, you have shared your thing, right? Completely? Oh, yeah, yes. I've shared more than what I should be uh, sharing, I think. Okay. I just carried away with the Bharani energy, Appa Bharani, like uh, water, it is flowing. Right. I should stop. Right, I should right, put right. my hand on. No, it's great. What was shared was great, Dr. Pai. I think, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. So, like, uh, I'll kind of fill in the blanks with the many many points which everyone added actually and uh, and also i want to add some more uh, some more bit also um, so um uh, one thing of course as we omens for the video and all that it's interesting we uh yeah, we are making as sun is very close to barney nakshatra at least that's good uh rahu is also close to barney nakshatra though it's in ashri nakshatra right now and all that jupiter is also there so yeah we are like you know as uh, aditya mentioned we are like teaching about barney and all that now uh, also, the interesting moment was that usually uh, EVG is like second or third, but today, un you know, unusually, she was the first one actually. Usually, it's Aditya and all that. So, you can see Barney itself, that itself shows the prominence of feminine energy or a uh, Shakti energy and all that, that kind of thing. Females are, of course, the one capable of giving birth actually. So, that birth energy is very strong. That's something you can actually say with Barney. That's one thing I want to highlight also. Of course, that has its own uh, things, uh, you know. Um, so, birth. So usually the birth and death is a very powerful theme here, actually. Now, whether in terms of, uh, and this is a very fascinating point. So uh, women who are pregnant, so they do carry Shakti, actually. They do carry a specific kind of Shakti. So there is a Rahu kind of energy that is building up within them. And when the moment they give delivery, they, the moment they give birth to a child, then the Rahu in the chart gets improved significantly. Because now the genes which are, hold within you and your uh, siblings and that generation now there has one more person to energetically carry it so you'll begin to see when with each birth of a child the rahu on the chart gets improved actually and many times you will see birth of a child usually brings in a lot of money to the father or to the mother wealth to the family and so forth because of that so that's a very and this is a very direct point so both uh barney and uh barney nakshatra having a link with rahu is a very interesting point now the same thing can be said with death of someone. So if death of an elder, if it happens, uh, so if a death of an elder, the eldest person in the family dies, the grandfather dies, now immediately Rahu is getting spoiled or Rahu is actually, there is less people to handle that Rahu energy. You might see a sudden impact of Rahu energy kind of thing happening. So usually in, uh, typically in India and all that, they don't do any rituals when someone has died in the family. So typically for an entire year, they might not do, uh, you know, uh, big rituals or they might not celebrate festivals and so forth and all that which is a which is a normal thing now surprisingly what i've noticed is that if people do decide to do something in the first year of some death happening in the nearby family there is some problems that will come so rahu kind of problems is also possible for at least for one year actually so rahu wherever that sign is placed in there'll be a challenging thing and there's a pure birth and death thing actually Birth happens, your Rahu improves. Blessings come, wealth comes and all that. Death happens, Rahu is actually considered to be spoiled. Now, in some cases, if the grandfather is carrying or grandmother is carrying negative energy, that person dies, then you might get a relief also. Now, that's a very rare thing. But this kind of, this is a very interesting birth and death uh, thing I want to highlight. Now, of course, birth uh, is also um, very interesting. So, sometimes karma with a pregnant woman and all that, you can say that will burn. So, either a hidden pregnancy, um, so Jupiter is about to get burning, a lot of women are about to get pregnant, that kind of thing you can say, uh, quite easily you can say that. Also like uh, with uh, karma with pregnant women, now it can be good karma, it can be bad karma, depending on the house placement and so forth. So like either you took care of a pregnant woman when they are going through a tough time, or you kicked out a pregnant woman, 
because you have some karma and all that. So that kind of thing you can actually see with burning. That is one big thing here. Now, of course, the curse of a pregnant woman. So many times in uh, ancient times and so forth, when women did not have any rights, it was a very tough thing for them. So, uh, you know, they might have, um, the father might not have been around and so forth. And usually those kind of karmas you begin to see. So, of course, um, one of the themes which Dr. Pai mentioned in, in uh, the original uh, Barney video was that uh, he mentioned how Yama had a karma with Sanjana, who was a stepmother. So, usually this karma with stepmother, stepfather and all that is also commonly, um, commonly found here. So, either... Uh, either you are away from your birth father or away from your birth mother. Now, either the birth mother died or the birth father uh, is away for some legal reasons and so forth. So, all this typical child custody issues and so forth, all that kind of thing usually plays out here. Now, that's where you begin to see the law and all that. Of course, then also you begin to understand the system of, you know, how the lawyers are actually taking money out of you and all that. You can clearly see that when you see through the whole thing. Though it's a painful thing to see. But you can see that kind of uh, energy very strongly, actually. Now, this particular karma of a pregnant woman. Now, this is another thing. Now, it's also interesting that uh, Yama, uh, in the story uh, with Sanjana, he also kicks Sanjana also. So, he kicks his mother, uh, is what it's... Uh, sorry, he kicks Chaya. Uh, my bad. So, he kicks Chaya, who was supposed to be his mother. Uh, but then Chaya curses him back, may your leg be filled with worms and so forth. And then uh, Yamaraj goes to Surya and says, she's not my mother, no mother would curse her own child. And then Surya is like, yeah, you're right. So, you know, and then Chaya comes out with the truth and so forth. So many times these natives will have a very strong persistent sense of finding the truth no matter what. And that can actually become very strong to the point of even questioning their own family members actually. Or people who appear to be their own family members also, that kind of karma. Now many times, this also sometimes imply they might also harm their mother figure. At some point, so harsh words towards mother figure, physical abuse towards their mothers, and so forth, sometimes can also happen. So that's also a very challenging thing with Barney. So it's like uh, it's almost like they are trying to find the truth of the situation, but in, along the process, a mother figure is getting impacted. So sometimes that kind of karma can also play out. Now, of course, but after all this, Yama gets to become a, a he gets gets to be the lord of the Pitruloka and all that. He also becomes the uh, the overseer of death and all that, all that karma kind of thing plays out. Now, interestingly, uh, at this point, there is a very, a very uh, fascinating link that is playing out uh, with uh, Pitris and so forth. Now, Pitris is uh, linked with the nakshatra of Maga. And you find that, uh, so Maga nakshatra, I think this is also something that Dr. Pai mentioned before, how like uh, Maga nakshatra natives will actually end up listening to a Barney nakshatra native more just because, you know, energetically they feel that Barni Nakshatra or Yamaraj is their boss kind of thing actually. So it's like the king of the Yamaloka or Pitruloka and they are just residents of the Pitruloka. So a Maga Nakshatra native will never listen to anyone else but they might only end up listening to a Barni Nakshatra native. So this linkage between a Barni Nakshatra native and a Maga Nakshatra native can quite often happen. Husband and wife combinations, boss and secretary combination. I mean the CEO still has to listen to the secretary for his scheduling and all that. You can see that kind of thing. You know, so you might see that kind of thing going on. Uh, husbands and wives, father, mother, uh, father, children, uh, that kind of thing, thinking. Uh, that kind of linkage also, you'll see that. Now, it's interesting, uh, Yuji also mentioned the story of Vidura, how um, Yamaraj was cursed by the sage, uh, by a sage and so forth, and he had to be born in a lower loka to clear out his karma with that sage of that higher loka. Now, surprisingly, when he actually came down to the uh, Bhuloka as, uh, to be born as Vidur, he actually made his uh, chief amongst the Pitris, who is Aryaman, as the temporary lord of uh, Yamaloga and Pitru Pituloga, actually. So Aryaman is Uttarpalgini. Usually you are more likely to find, uh, you know, uh, Barni Nakshatra native having good friends with Uttarpalgini Nakshatra placements and so forth, and they'll have a karma like that. So either they'll find, okay, I'm going to do this thing, help me out here. And this might be the colleagues you work with and so forth, kind of thing might also happen. So this linkage between Barney and uh, Ariman uh, or Uttarfalgini can also play. Now this could also be a very good thing, good relatives, good friends, could be husband, wife thing also, to be frank. Or like temporary people who are stepping in for you kind of thing. And so this could also be relatives and all that quite easy. Now the next nakshatra is very fascinating. Now this is a big thing. So in the sense that... Um, um, so the stories of Nachiketa. So one common theme you can see with Nachiketa uh, is that Nachiketa, of course, uh, you know, uh, is a young child, 16-year-old child. 
who's actually uh, asking questions of uh, he specifically asked three boons of yamraj also which is also very fascinating uh, and then but what is the there is another parallel that is happening with um, uh, savitri also the wife now savitri if uh, savitri and gayatri are the wives of brahma also the same time so you begin to see when interesting thing now gayatri mantra can be linked with savitur which is following a hasta so there is a big clue there so you can say that savitri is actually can be having a linkage with hasta now nachiketa is actually young child so he is like a mercury actually he is not jupiter he is not venus he is mercury and mercury is a planet that is getting exalted in hasta so you will find that barney and more importantly yamraj himself rides a buffalo the animal of which is hasta animal linked with hasta nakshatra so you will find that barney nakshatra native will have to succumb to what a hasta nakshatra native will have to say so the hasta nakshatra native telling tell me the three boons tell give me three boons they will have to and they will end up doing it so you think about barney nakshatra controlling a you know maga nakshatra native but but all nakshatras will have one some other nakshatra controlling them also one way or other it will play out it will balance itself out so you'll see the hasta nakshatra native having a direct control almost over a barney nakshatra native because that so like the barney nakshatra native is planning to do something just like how aditya said yamraj is trying to do his job but there was a problem a hasta nakshatra native created a problem now if you look at the natural zodiac you can see hasta nakshatra is falling six houses away from barney nakshatra also so that also makes a perfect sense with respect to why challenges came forth uttara falguni after all is uh, technically falling fifth house and sixth house so there is a linkage there maga nakshatra is falling five houses away from barney so there is a uh, you know uh, you are you the barney nakshatra is having a fine nine thing going on so maga nakshatra would look at barney nakshatra as an advisor and all that you can see that So that is a very uh, interesting thing. Well, Nachiketa, you know? yeah. Nachiketa is the nurse sound, which is Anuradha Nakshatra, correct? That's also correct. Eight six. That's also eight six relation. Yeah. Again, eight, exactly correct. So now, so that's a good point. In fact, na sounding natives can n letter names or na sound beginning names, especially or na sound in their names can also create an eight house kind of effect, which is a sudden problems or unexpected problems and so forth for Barney Nakshatra native. That's a very default kind of a straightforward thing. Also, that's a very good point. now the other thing continuing in the nakshatra is the next one is actually vishwakarma's chitra nakshatra and if you look at chitra gupta he is the assistant of yamraj now what is interesting is that so as uh, i think aditya mentioned uh, he complains to i think dr pai or aditya i forgot who so like uh, yamraj complains to brahma okay give me an assistant i'm i have too much work and chitra gupta comes now chitra gupta is actually chitra nakshatra quite easy is chitra nakshatra name itself is there in chitra gupta very easily you can say chitra nakshatra energy is there in chitra gupta's case also so chitra gupta is a record keeper and all that so usually barney nakshatra native is more likely to get a very good assistant at some point in time someone who will assist them someone like a good secretary like a good student or some uh, something like that who will actually play this kind of role at some point in time. and chitra gupta is having karma with pictures so a lot of picture kind of karma can happen for these natives so chitra gupta of course is secret pictures and so forth so of course barney is the nakshatra having sexual organ of the female as the symbol so you put a secret picture you get uh, exposed and all that sexual scandal and all that typical themes you can find if you have malefics here and malefic houses and all that with barney nakshatra and all that because of that now chitra gupta is also interesting because there is a record keeping karma so at some point these natives will have to maintain records like what are the bills everything you know what are the when did i get thing some karma records can also happen depending upon the planetary disposition here also that is also uh, uh, so nakshatra linkage is very interesting and of course swati nakshatra is the exactly opposite nakshatra to barni nakshatra and one of the offerings which is usually given to um, now this is very interesting this is a very fascinating point i came to know about uh, there is a temple in nepal which is which is like a, a very famous durga temple if i am not mistaken Uh, they have like um, 54 buffaloes and 54 goats are sacrificed exactly on the navmi tithi navmi day during the navratri is actually and there's just a temple is open just once a year they bring in like 54 buffaloes 54 goats they sacrifice it completely once a year now that's what happens there actually they still follow that tradition and so forth and all that but the idea that you're sacrificing a buffalo a buffalo is a very if you look at the nature of buffalo buffalo is a stuck animal buffalo does not move you know bays gaya pani mein right so that kind of thing so the buffalo has gone into the buffalo it's that this thing it's never going to come out you know so usually these natives also will have a thing like uh, where they have and yamraj is uh, riding on a buffalo so they might uh, they might so they take shower they are taking long showers you know they are taking bath kind of thing they are taking they are like enjoying their bath and all three hour bath 
you know, typical Bernie Nechutra Neto kind of thing. Actually, that kind of thing can actually happen here also. Now, of course, this is applicable to Hasta and Swati, but Bernie is also having this direct link because of the Buffalo linkage. Now, uh, with, with I wanted to uh, highlight one more aspect. Um, it is definitely Hasta and all. Yeah, you can say that. Now, I see the. <laughs> Yeah. I do that, so I know that. <laughs> no, also, the... I, I don't get irritated if someone. Yeah. I don't get irritated if someone disturbs me during my bath. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Be ready to fight after I come from the bathroom. Yeah, exactly right. So that that kind of thing will happen. So that kind of bathroom Why? karma. Yeah, exactly right. That will play out. That's a very interesting uh, point actually. Now uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, the there are some more uh, points also. Um, so I didn't mention about pregnancy karma, unplanned pregnancy karma and all that can sometimes happen. Uh, you know, um, now the, um, of course, Swati Nakshatra is exactly opposite to um, Bari Nakshatra. Now, what is interesting is that Yamaraj actually shares a lot of knowledge to Nachiketa. He's sharing his that Upanishad is considered to be one of the primal, very important uh, Upanishads after all, principal Upanishads and all that stuff. So this blessing of Goddess Saraswati is something that these natives will eventually come across in, in their lifetime. So because Swati is exactly opposite to Barney, so Saraswati, Saraswati. So there is Swati in Saraswati also. You'll find that kind of aspect coming in time. And key word is coming in time. So, and what is surprising about that is that Amla is a fruit. Why is Amla the fruit for Barney Nakshatra? Uh, if you eat Amla first time, it is sour. It is immediately sour. If you have eaten an Amla, you know that it's sour. Eventually, after some time, it becomes sweet. So anything in life. So initially, it is always sour. But then when you eventually time comes and so forth, eventually it becomes very really sweet. So they do say that wine ages like, uh, you know, you age like wine and all that. So wine, of course, it becomes much more, uh, you know, um, richer and more great flavor comes when it's old and all that. That kind of aspect, actually. Now, so these are some good points. Now, the other points I want to say, share. Now, it's interesting with um, Yudhishthira, uh, who was the son of Dharmaraja, who was called as Dharmaraja and all that in Mahabharata. He had this very fascinating karma with the elephant, actually. You know, so in the famous story in the in the Mahabharata, he had to, he was approached, uh, Dronacharya could not be uh, defeated. So only way to defeat was that his Ashwatthama, they had to create an illusion about Ashwatthama being dead. So of course, Yudhishthira cannot speak a lie. You know, so uh, Bhima was uh, asked by Krishna to kill the slay the elephant, uh, Ashwatthama, whose name was Ashwatthama. And then uh, now Drona, then every everyone is celebrating Ashutama is dead, Ashutama is dead. Now Dronacharya comes to see this and Dronacharya is asked, Dronacharya approaches uh, Yudhishthira, I know you will not lie, tell me what happened, right? Is Ashutama dead? Now famously, Yudhishthira says, Ashutama, Ashutama Hatha, Ashutama is dead. Iti Narova Kunjarova. So Iti Narova Kunjarova. So that means that the man, not the man, but the elephant. Now what is interesting is that at this point, the second half is when Krishna makes it louder. So Krishna plays the as the soldiers to beat up the drum so that the second half is not understood. Now this is a very important point. So many times this complete knowledge, the karma of not passing complete information, that kind of karma can happen. And it said that that was the only karma. Now there are two aspects also. There is also one more aspect where they say, one more version of the story where they say Yudhishthira supposedly reduced his voice in the second time. That's a, that's an act by Yudhishthira, and which is which is the only lie which Yudhishthira said because of which uh, the after during Sorgaravan time Yamaraj had to show him the Yamaloka and the Hell Pata Loka and all that. So that's a very important point. So at some point, these natives will not pass on the complete information because of circumstances or whatnot. At some point, they'll have to say a white lie. That's a guaranteed thing that is going to happen. At some point, there'll be an elephant in the room which they'll have to address. That kind of karma will actually play out for these natives. And this is a very important point. So completion karma. Now completion karma is a very important thing with Bernie. So as I think Dr. Pai and EG also mentioned, so at some point something will end for them. A big karmic cycle in the family can end. A new karmic cycle can begin also at the same time. So this could be a karmic pattern. Now this is very, uh, very interesting. I was actually talking to, uh, well, uh, you know, I was uh, talking to one of these uh, natives who had a troubled mother, alcoholic mother and all that recently. So what this was going on, and that was what the, his father actually surprisingly said something um, you have to, uh, you know, you have to let go of the mother whom you thought you knew. You have to grieve for her. You have to think of that. That mother whom you know is, is dead. You have to grieve for that person. Now, approach a new, more, uh, more alcoholic, more abusive mother. <laughs> That's a different person. That kind of thing. So it's a very tough thing. 
so even to to deal with the emotion of grief of a living person can also happen with barney and this native actually had barney also he actually had a uh, i mean he had a nightmare of planets but you know you could still see that so you could see this particular thing going on actually but sometimes this is grief karma death karma now usually death is something that is a very powerful um, balancer of karma so in fact there are a lot of powerful meditations on death uh, in buddhist tradition there are plenty so which is great so when eg actually brought about the book of the dead and bardo and all that which is amazing actually so in fact bardo they say there are many bardos also you know you can be a lower bardo and higher bardo and all that but the but the goal of the book of the dead is that you don't need to die to go through that you can start to purify your karmas even now so you know that kind of aspect there is a powerful opportunity with the book of the dead also and when you understand that there are aspects of yourself stuck in very old patterns and so forth it is a very powerful way to break through those patterns now so that you can begin a new thing that's a very very important thing also now the um, the other uh, very fascinating thing about uh, uh, you know the mahabharata also is that they say there are three gems in mahabharata one being the bhagavad gita the second being the um, second being the vishnu sahasranam and third thing which they actually say is actually vidur neeti actually so in ancient times vidur neeti was a very powerful text which kings would actually learn about and that was a big thing kings would study the vidur neeti how to rule a kingdom and all that of course as i think dr pai or aditya mentioned it was like a, a, the vidura's uh, wisdom was not absorbed by the drashta and so forth and all that so these natives will have the karma to give advice which is not absorbed by the other person that kind of karma can happen but it might eventually play out very it might it might become very important after death and all that uh, can also happen that's also one more karma that can play out now in uh, typically uh, in um, uh, you know yamraj of course is the judge of your karma uh, so usually the good side of judges that you can judge things or have the faculty of discrimination correctly but there is a proclivity towards judging people in barni nakshatra they are more likely to say this this clan is bad or this family is bad that is that kind of proclivity is very strong where aries also you will see that kind of aspect very strong but eventually they will learn in time the the aspect of what ug uh, uh, beautifully said the idea of like the, the right and wrong the dharma and all that is the final thing which yudhishthira has to leave before he has to go towards this thing he have, before his his swargaron is complete so this aspect of judging being judgmental now these natives literally might have to play the role of judges like in competitions and so forth eventually at some point that kind of karma will happen that's also the other aspect now uh, this is uh, also very uh, of course uh, uh, saturn is getting double tier in barney now because of which they do say um, so any kind of saturn in deities um, menstruating women usually should be more careful and so forth this is one of the things they usually say so sometimes they in for instance in kerala there is a famous ayappa temple where menstruating women are not allowed because the energy of that temple will be it's a very high saturn debilitation of saturn will happen so wombs will energetically be affected is the reason for that so of course there was a big controversy about that and all that couple of years ago so that's still almost like still going on but this understanding of saturn once you understand saturn once you understand barney's the point was saturn is getting debilitated no one no energetically aware woman is going to go to like ayappa temple and all that especially when you find a lot of saturn there a lot of brahmacharis there and all that. everyone wearing black thousands of black people there and all that like thousands of black cloth wearing people there and all that you you see that it's too much saturn so the creative principle is actually having a problem in very strong saturn in temples actually so that is also one more aspect now this menstruation related problems can also happen so sometimes in this, they do say some temples where they are actually women when they are menstruating they are not expected to visit temples so sometimes because menstruation blood is always continuing uh, when blood uh, menstruating thing is happening so when that is coming so they say the field of that temple the kshetra of the temple it could actually um, the energy could be impacted now there is good side to it there is bad side to it i mean there are hardcore temples where menstruating women has to be used there are but generic temples this can happen so sometimes the karma of a menstruating woman so someone if uh, they started menstruating when they are in a temple there are also temples where men are not allowed exactly no, correct that's... so in fact the kamaja temple women are not actually only women are the ones who are purifying the goddess uh, when it's like uh, you know when the goddess is menstruating there actually so men are not allowed actually during that time period so you have to wait three days when the women do the purification ritual then you can go in actually so it's a very powerful thing of course even in kerala there is some temple i remember i don't forget the right that that one temple where only women are allowed uh, they make some atukal atukal no atukal atukal temple is a famous temple atukal bagori temple in close to trivandrum 
is a famous temple the women do the pongal actually so that's the thing men cannot make the pongal which is the rice and so forth women has to make the pongal and offer it offer it to the goddess so that is a very women based ritual which happens in mass and so forth and that is that's a good point uh, good point aditya now the uh, menstruation kind of karma i've seen so either now some women are like atheist they don't they like i don't care i'll just go i'm menstruating they come back there they have some job issues and all that because of that so that kind of thing can happen if you know astrology saturn gets doubled in burning you can see why that kind of thing happen now the other aspect uh, also i want to um, so but of course uh, you know uh, the whole karma around menstruation uh, and uh, perhaps it might have been taken to an extreme and all that so sometimes first menstruation trauma and all that for young teenage girls and all that that kind of karma might also be linked with burn you also in that regard that kind of karma can also happen now the uh, saturn gets doubled in burn so and as aditya clearly mentioned these natives will have a time management problems that's a real problem so usually these natives are more likely to be chronic procrastinators in general so they are more likely to do everything at the last minute and so forth which is a real problem for these natives so usually uh, the reason why energetically energetically that is happening is yamaraj is someone who comes alive when the moment is when someone is about to die so you are trying to the deadline is approaching that's when we all come alive right so that kind of thing so usually it becomes very important to recognize or increase the deadlines for a particular project similar to that so the moment you plan in terms of deadlines you can actually and you increase the number of deadlines you can actually get a lot of things done with burning also so and usually burning nakshatra natives are usually the natives who come in last in a wedding they come in last in the they are the last person to show up the last man standing and so forth uh, you know that kind of karma you'll see a lot actually so a big wedding is happening a big event is happening the last person last everyone has left the last volunteers to clean up a place you know the the party is over the people who is the person who is cleaning up the place after the party right that's a typical barney kind of energy last people still there actually now uh, uh, there is also a very uh, interesting um, thing here um, with uh, with certain kinds of uh, uh, energy which is also very interesting so these natives will be very easily drawn to all these hardcore uh, tantric or hardcore agora kind of thing where you actually are meditating upon like you know funeral pyre you know the dead man's body or even like you can say smashan kali kind of form all that kind of aspect so usually in smashan kali apparently i didn't know like you have to sometimes you might have to get bit by like uh, dogs or jackals or something even to get a blessing of that particular god and then people are like yeah bite, bite me kind of thing you know they'll be completely fine with that so but that kind of energy where is where they are covering themselves with ashes of dead people's ashes and so forth that kind of energy can actually become very strong here also and many times these natives because of that might be having a karma funeral uh, funerals and so forth you know uh, not funerals the the places where the dead are buried cemeteries and so forth so many times you will find these natives might have a cemetery very close to their home they are living close to a cemetery or they might have a cemetery kind of a um uh, thing close to the family home or something that kind of cemetery link is also one more thing you will begin to see also now um now cemetery is also interesting because you find this tombs actually now when enlightened people die they are ideally not burnt you know they are actually buried they have a tomb and the amazing thing is that when you go to one of these tombs you can actually get a lot of blessings so there is a lot of samadhis out there and it's called as jiva samadhi so a lot of jiva samadhis or a lot of siddhars are there across tamil nadu and all that each of the, i mean there is an entire system of remedies based on the visiting tombs and so forth and all that now however say you have pre existing karma towards a uh, towards a king or the tomb or something or towards a particular civilization you go and visit the tomb you might actually get curses also at the same time so that might work in both ways enlightened people's tombs samadhi stands of gurus and all that great but the tombs of some civilizations and some kings and so forth karma can also get triggered depending upon your own uh, thing and all that now and that's a very important point in my view because a lot of uh, sometimes you see a lot of good things happening in your life after you visit the jiva samadhi of a guru and all that you will see that particular aspect now the um, of course the appa barni is the original name appa means water so and water actually flows downhill right so water from the top of the hill will always flow downhill actually so the knowledge always falls from from a higher potential to a lower potential and barni nakshatra natives have this uh, energy, uh, capacity to capture the energy coming from a higher energy and they might have to hold that water for some time at least so that particular dam building da- holding things back holding the energies forward and all that kind of energies can also happen but of course it's still water 
so typically when you see a water in a home situation flooding is a usual thing which you see and typically at some point these natives might get flooding and all that in their home because of that and flooding flooding is actually what defines a very fertile region so like nile river delta for instance because the rivers are flooding that's why they're getting those fertile uh, rivers and so forth and all that and of course if you are into the marvel cinematic universe the thanos right the guy who was fascinated by death he wanted like how the people how the population to entire die you see this kind of themes or like someone who's captured captured by this uh, energy of the theme of death and all that you see that particular than and of course thanos is similar to the name of god of death in greek and all that so that is also one more aspecting aspecting uh, one more interesting aspect there now the uh, other uh, uh, certain birds of uh, black colored birds like a crow and uh, i think magpies if i'm not mistaken they do carry the energy of saturn without a doubt so then feeding them is very powerful taking care of the elderly is a very powerful remedy here without a doubt taking care of a disabled person which uh, eg mentioned completely disabled person is a very big blessing in many powerful ways a lot of good karmas are generated with that now um, there is a couple more things i want to say now this is very interesting when dr pai actually mentioned how lord ram actually had to send hanuman like to chase a ring you know which is a very interesting thing uh, because hanuman Hanuman ji, of course, is uh, Shani exalted. He prevents Shani and all that. So Vayu is completely controlled. So Hanuman ji can protect your life in many powerful ways. Now, so this this idea of Shani, this idea of like a uh, um, exalted Shani capable of holding your life, actually, this is a very interesting idea because I came across, I came to know about uh, so if you participate in certain rituals. Now they are called as Shakti rituals. Shakti rituals are the rituals in which you are offering meat and alcohol and all that to the goddess. so sometimes you are actually offering a roosters a rooster thing rooster is actually dipped in alcohol and then you you know make a chicken curry out of it and you eat it that's the typical thing that happens there actually now some people who have attended in shakti rituals sometimes they are chronically uh, what do you call they are 80 plus 85 plus still they're not dying you know because the goddess or the energy that fee energy field is actually protecting them from death and then uh, then what they have to do is that they have to go to one of these shaktiya temples one of these priest living in a shaktiya temple they have a specific class also you have to ask them they come they, they tell you they do some ritual and so forth and then they give you a coconut or something you take the coconut smash the coconut or something and then after that this energy field that was protecting is actually taken away then 3 days later they die kind of thing so sometimes this kind of things is something that can happen when you have activated some saturn energy is very strongly so just like how hanuman ji had to be removed had to be uh, dis- uh, displaced actually these energy field there can be protective energy fields around some people and all that especially around certain more uh, uh, saturn kind of energy carrying goddesses and all that goddesses or energy field capable of controlling saturn that's the best way i can frame it. and that's a very um, interesting point and shakti the idea of shakti and all that the idea of like even accepting death so of course it's the death of an animal which is happening so shakti sampradaya is a different kind of sampradaya in which that you are completely okay with birth and death you know so death of the animal is happening death of the thing is also happening but of course it there might be aspects where people are like uh, you know just oh, i just like the flavor of chicken so that's why i'm eating it an animal is still getting hurt no matter what but uh, there are and if because it's an energy thing because there is an energetic programming thing happening there can be some uh, side effects to that now the other aspect with the barney of uh, which is also uh, which aditya and dr pai also mentioned is yamuna river now yamuna river is an underestimated river if you go to delhi and look at yamuna river it's one of the dirtiest rivers out there you know so you won't feel like taking dip and all that but of course you go to this specific point of uh, uh, yamuna river uh, where you can yamuna ghat is there and so forth in delhi and all that where you can get it but it's a very powerful place for you to clear off a lot of barney karma that i cannot say enough because if you and if you go to the yamuna river do any rituals take dips in that river everyone goes to ganga like anything right everyone will go to haridwar kashi and rishikesh and all that but yamuna river is equally very powerful river in terms of improving your saturn do any kind of rituals to yamuna river taking dip in yamuna river regularly especially on fridays or especially when moon is transiting barney or moon is transiting on saturn your natal saturn or transiting saturn very very powerful time period to improve your karma and i cannot say that enough now even if you don't have yamuna river just take a dip in river you will see changes coming up very easily it's a very very powerful place so rivers do carry the energy of barney very strong and many times they might end up living close to a river 
um, getting access to a river and so forth quite easily. Now, there are a couple more points. Now, one point which uh, uh, which uh, the original Vedic story in which uh, about Yama is that Indra, when he became, he wanted to become the king of the uh, gods. He Varuna was the celestial king actually. He was the uh, Deva Deva Indra at that point in time. So he had to be brought down. So Indra basically asked Yamaraj to control Varuna, and then once Varuna is controlled, that is when Indra became the king of the Devas. So usually because of that. Barni Nakshatra natives will also have karma with Satabisha Nakshatra natives also very easily. So the Satabisha Nakshatra native will feel like they are getting they are getting controlled by a Barni Nakshatra native a lot. So that kind of complementary karma will also play out also very easily. Now Varna is also amazing. Varna is also the king of the uh, god of the oceans and so forth. So many times this apa this karma of ocean traveling across the ocean and so forth can also happen very strongly. Now the um, the other energy is that of Saturn getting debilitated. So at some point, these natives will have to work with a code of uh, laws for themselves. This is the first point with Aries where the blind uh, impulse of Ashwini has to be codified and you have to work with a set of principles and so forth. It could be that even uh, it could be a spiritual set of principles. It could be like a, um, a code which they adhere to no matter what. But that code will help them without a doubt. A Bharani native needs some kind of code. That's why Yama, in the Ashtanga Yoga, the Yama's Anga is actually showing up in the first sign of Aries very easily. So you can see this Yama, some kind of Yama, some kind of restraint has to happen. Now, restraint also means saying no to things when you when you should be saying no. So like uh, this karma of saying no, the word no <laughs> is a very favorite word for Bharani Nakshatra Nato because they will actually say, no, I don't want that or no, I, you cannot do that or whatnot. You know, that kind of aspect also you will see. And as I didn't mention, there is also um, a big karma with death here. So usually, Bharani Nakshatra can also mean early death happening in the family, as was discussed and so forth. So some, sometimes this funeral karma. So usually, sometimes what can also happen, many other animals also die around these natives quite often. You will see they might be coming across dead birds. They might be coming across, uh, you know, uh, dead animals, dead dogs, dead cats. And they might have the karma to bury the animals, say a prayer, or do the funeral of this karma. They might have to be the priest, the funeral priests in general. So that kind of karma. Now, if you attend a funeral home, you know there is a very pure, uh, everyone is sad and everyone is depressed and so forth. But if you if you are witness to that uh, home, if you are actually um, helping them out and all that, that's an excellent thing to help do during Barani Nakshatra thing and all that. It's an excellent way to improve that karma also. Donating towards funeral homes or helping out uh, dead People who are going through funerals in their life and so forth is one of the best things a Bharani Nakshatra native can actually help out. And any kind of help you do, you are earning merit in the eyes of Yama and all that in a big way. And I cannot say that. That actually improves your time. That actually improves your Saturn and so forth uh, quite a lot. And that that I cannot say that now. Anyone go close to death and all that. you can Now see, in general, if you see a funeral in general, usually you tend to think hardly about your own life. That's a typical thing. What am I doing correctly? What am I doing incorrectly? And all that it becomes very obvious. And this was an actual technique in Tibetan Buddhism. You actually meditate upon death and all that, which is how the bardo and all that came. You would meditate upon death. In fact, that was the Steve Jobs would famously say, you, you know, think about this is the, as the last day on earth for you. How would you actually live your life? You know, that's what Steve Jobs would say. Of course, he had Uttarapalini Lagna, if I'm not mistaken. So you could see he was close to that kind of energy in general. That is one aspect. Now, there are a couple more points, which I came across recently. So... There is this whole method acting thing, right? So method acting thing is that you become like the character. You live that character six months. So you are, you know, you play that uh, character, like you are drink like the character, eat like the character. You live like the character for a six month or long time. You immerse yourself very strongly. And then you act it out on the screen. And that those actors are very powerful. Those performances are very powerful and all that. And, you know, these natives end up making big money and all that after that. So especially those actors and support. Now, this is a method acting thing also has its pros and cons. So, like, the actor can channel various energies from different lokas and so forth also quite easily. So, if you channel a negative character, you might have some consequences with that. If you channel a positive character, you can get a lot of blessings with that also. But actors do their job in terms of performing and all that. But there are consequences to the energetic consequences to the energetic actions you do. Simple as that. So, this method acting thing is something also I've seen. 
where they might actually fall from their place and so forth because they have channeled some energies which are not great for them. That kind of acting, you might see. So usually, if they're playing out negative characters, some problems in their family and all that might also come because of that energy which they're bringing and all that. So if you're playing like a scandalous man and all that, so you know, you need not be surprised <laughs> if your marriage is going into scandal immediately a couple of years later and whatnot, similar to that. So that kind of karma can play out. So this method acting was very interesting. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting thing which I thought because sometimes this potential fault and that's why these natives had to have codes. Like, you know, I cannot channel this thing. I need to limit myself. I cannot completely surrender and all that in that particular way in terms of characters. However, in terms of spirituality and all that, this is where method acting is a perfect thing to do in terms of like, you know, getting enlightened. You actually have to surrender yourself to that particular energy of the divine and so forth in which you finally get uh, uh, moksha and all that because of that. Now, Barney is also the sexual organ and all that. So sexual organ diseases and so forth can actually happen. It's a typical thing, especially if you have malefics there. Sexuality kind of thing. So elephant. Now, elephant is very interesting. Now, Aditya shared the elephant. In Kerala, there was a big scene recently like where one elephant that had gone berserk had to be controlled by five other elephants and so forth. So it had to be a group effort to control one elephant and all that. So it was a big news and so forth, actually. So finally, that it, it was a six-hour operation to get five elephants to like push one elephant into a truck and take it and put it in a much more friendlier, uh, you know, uh, animal, this one, all that. So sometimes these natives will have animal karma, like uh, elephants and so forth. So uh, curse of an elephant or a blessing of an elephant also can be linked with Barney Nakshatra also. So you might see that. So that is also one more aspect. Now, um, I think I'm more or less done, but there are a couple more points. Now, Dr. Pai also mentioned, um, uh, you know, I mean, Aditya also briefly mentioned about karma with siblings and all that. Now, if you know Game of Thrones, now spoiler alert, now Game of Thrones, the first episode is basically sexual relationship or incest relationship between the brother and the sister action. And that's the whole thing. That's what is actually coming to an end uh, in the entire Game of Thrones and all that and so forth. And towards the end also, even there, there's a potential for an ancestral kind of thing going on, but they're like, no, we can't continue it and all that, which is what happens also. Now, so this kind of potential for that is definitely there. So usually it could be like a relationship, uh, incestuous kind of thing, potential that to happen. So being aware about that and avoiding that is usually recommended because children, as, uh, as was mentioned, genetically will be deformed and all that. So that kind of karma potentially can happen. Now, it's interesting in Egypt and so forth, uh, there used to be a time when breeding would happen within the family and then then eventually that family completely died off also. So that's not also, not also completely healthy kind of thing. So you see that. Now, of course, land of the dead, land where the dead people are venerated, karma with those lands can also be something which Barni Nakshatra might have. They might end up going to Egypt. They might end up going to see some tombs of some saints and so forth and all that can also happen. Now, the... Um, this is a very interesting point. Now, usually, the sexual organ of the female is what is uh, symbolized in Barney. But the uh, the the sexual what is the shivling actually? The shivling is actually like a symbol ellipsoid shape. Now, what is uh, interesting about the shivling is that now, of course, eventually the symbol ellipsoid shape. Eventually, they put it on a yoni and all that. That sexual energy, the energy of creation, is something you have with the shivling. That's a very powerful thing also. Now, the, and of course, uh, Shivaling, uh, Lingam is the sexual organ as it's called in Sanskrit and Hindi and all that. Now, what is uh, interesting is that the sounds link with uh, uh, Barni Nakshatra is actually Li, Lu, and Le, and Lo. So, anytime you see these words, Li sound, Lu sound, Le sound, or Lo sound, 100%, there's a very powerful Barni energy there. In fact, uh, someone actually once told me that uh, there was some, uh, there was a social worker uh, who was a saint kind of thing who was working with uh, uh, children who had um, uh, who could not walk and all that and he found that the common common the most common sound in their name was the lee sound actually now if they and it was in punjab or something so if the name had harleen or something or you know livia or something like that good chance that they had a problem with saturn there they could not walk and all that and one of the first things which the saint would do is that you would say, make sure you change the name to a different name. Now, from today onwards, your name is not Harleen or Libya or something. Your name is going to be some other name, which is not, which is much more gentler name and all that. So you see, now, fascinating thing is that in the, in Chinese language also, Li as a word means separation, actually. 
So you see that. So they'll you'll see this kind of concept of separation kind of thing happening. So they'll say when friends are when friends are coming together, they should actually have um, they should not actually um, they should not separate the fruits that they're eating. Everyone should eat the fruit completely in circle and make sure the fruits are completed. Make sure the fruits are not actually separated is one of those things they actually say. It's a very interesting thing in Chinese culture in with regard to that. Now, so the words li, lu, le, and lo. So the lu sound, uh, you know, going to lu, for instance, to empty your bowels and all that. But lu is names and so forth, right? You'll see Barney themes happening very strongly there. Now, even the le sound, Lay sound is also a very powerful sound. So, like uh, you have um, a lot of interesting um, uh, things happening with the um, lay sound. Now, the other thing is also, um, for instance, I mean, the, you know, usually when you are not feeling great, you begin to see the, uh, you say you are feeling low, right? And that's the final sound of Barney, which is low also. So, that's also one more thing you begin to see. So, Barney is also very interesting in that particular way. You see there were some words like, uh, Levi's, for instance, that's a jeans, that's a company. Uh, and that guy actually had a good plant in Barney or something like that, which he was able to capture, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see that also. Now, the um, the final thing I want to uh, share is basically what Aditya also talked about briefly. But I'll talk about this uh, temple because, uh, because in Kerala, now this temple in Kerala, what is interesting about uh, Kerala is that, uh, you know, you celebrate your birthday on your Nakshatra day, actually. You know, so when, so whatever nakshatra you are in, so say you are uh, a Chitra nakshatra or something, you will actually say, uh, my birthday, you go to a temple on the Chitra nakshatra day to do the rituals and so forth and all that. So it's a nakshatra based uh, rituals are very powerful. So nakshatra based uh, events are more uh, stronger actually. Now in that context, I'll just share my screen. This particular uh, goddess temple. So this particular goddess temple is actually having, is called as Kodungalur. The Kodungalur Goddess Temple actually has a, a very famous festival called as Kodungalur Barni Festival. So, of course, the, what the name means is that it's, the festival is happening in Barni Nakshatra Day. And uh, what they have is that uh, it's a yearly festival dedicated to Badra Kali and Kodungalur. Uh, it's have, held between Barni days, between months of Kumbham and Meenam. So, that sun is in Kumbharashi and sun is in Meenarashi. Now, this period falls between the months of March, April and all that. It involves sacrifice of roosters, which is like Barni Nakshatra, dance of the oracles, cow the So you have shamanic kind of men, people who are living in two worlds and all that. Men and women actually, like in a traditional lamb, Revati Volka, singing of libelous ballads, Barni Pata. Now, these, they say, at this point, you're singing, you're cursing the goddess. You're swearing at the goddess at this point. So it is a pure Saturnian kind of energy, which you're directing towards this goddess actually. And smearing the image of the goddess with sandalwood paste and so forth. So these are the rituals there. Now I just want to show you this actually. And you have the rituals. One is the uh, sacrificing the rooster over a red silk cloth and all that. It symbolizes the fight between goddess Kali and the opponent Dharaka. So the concept of Kerala temple, certain uh, uh, Badragali temples is that the goddess is defeating the Dharuka as well actually. That is the origin for that. Now they do say this ritual is not being performed. Uh, it's reduced to covering stones or red silk coat. But this rituals happen just with one rooster now. It used to be there were lots of roosters. Now they just do it one rooster, uh, if I'm not mistaken. There is also a very interesting thing here. Now let me show you the thing. So you can see one of the festivals, one of the, I, can you see the oracles and all that? Are you seeing the picture? Yeah, okay, great. So you can see people are actually running with sticks in their hand. Used to be, it would actually be swords in their hand and all that. So let me try to see. Yeah, so this is one aspect. So people would actually have sticks in their hand and go around. Now, what is Yamaraj's Ayud? What is his weapon? A stick, right? So it makes sense. It's a Barney Day festival and all that. You can see they just run. They're swearing at the goddess when they're running and all that. They run around the goddess three times. So many people, a lot of people do it and all that. Now, of course, this is the aspect where they're covering the um, goddess cloth, the one of these stones with a red silk cloth. So the red color of Barney and all that is something you begin to see. So of course, natural fascination with red color and all that, that can happen. And here they actually throw the Roof of the temple covered in turmeric. So you do all the rituals and so forth. Finally, you throw turmeric upon the temple. So you do a lot of Mars-based rituals, which is red color. And finally, you're throwing Jupiter-based thing to purify that energy and so forth. So a lot of Mars has been, blood has been shed. Let's get some lesson out of it, which is Jupiter. So that's also one of the things you see here. And again, so the flag of a cow tindal. So before the people actually start running around the temple, there's a red flag that is also going up. This is a very important thing. So Rahu is the umbrella. And this is a red umbrella. Sorry, a red uh, umbrella that is actually goes up. And from that point on, the festival actually begins. 
Now, this is a very interesting thing. So, I wanted to, even in the other Wikipedia page about this temple, they say this is the original. So, if you look at this page, this particular temple is supposed to be the head of 64 Badragali temples in Kerala, especially in Malbar region and so forth. So, Malbar is the northern Kerala, actually. Nor, uh, from Cochin to these northern Kerala is basically Malbar, actually. You can see that. Now, as I mentioned, uh, one holding the head of demon king Daruka and, and the sickle ship sword. sword Next an ankler and the rebel, and you know, all that. Routine worship at temple at 3 a.m. and 21 p.m. and all that. Now, here I want to show this is the goddess actually. You can see the Kali is here in a different way. So it's a lot of weapons and Ugra Rupa and all that. Very, very fierce form actually. That is one aspect. But the other picture I want to show you was this particular thing. So usually you can see here a woman is actually having the sickle on her hand, the, the sickle sword actually, the, the moon sword as it's called. And she basically has cut on her head and all that. So there are other women within whom they they feel inclined towards the goddesses. Like they wear the they wear you know, the sickle, sickle is actually Maga Nakshatra shape. If you see the front right. head of it, it's a Maga right. Nakshatra. Very interesting. Maga Nakshatra. Yeah, very interesting. So they have the sword and all that. And the, of course, the men would actually men would also the goddess they uh, the goddess might speak uh, through a man or through a woman shaman and all that. So the shaman once they wear the red color. That is when the shaman is supposed to have, uh, shamanic trance is supposed to be endured actually. You will see that they actually jump up and down in a rhythmic fashion and so forth. It's like, it's hard to capture them. It's like you're dealing with a completely off the, off the world entity and all that. You see the people literally running around and so forth. They do the same thing. So even the shamans also run around the temple along with the men. That's also one of the things that happens. So that's also one of the things I want to say actually. Now this is a temple which is famous for its, uh, you know, uh, Barni festival actually. So Meenam Barni and uh, Kumbam Barni as it's called, you know, in Kerala. So you actually see, so many times in this particular temple has been following a different tradition, may, which makes it um, a more um, uh, more powerful. So, and this is the head of the Kali temples among the 64 Kali temples. So a lot of karmas can be improved upon and all that. So it's uh, interesting. And I want to show that also. So usually when you say Barni, Usually, you think about this particular goddess actually in Kerala and all that. So, and this particular temple is a very, very powerful temple uh, because of that also. Anyway, so this is what I have for Barney. So, I shared a lot. So, you know, you could see a lot of things also. Yeah. Great. So, this is it. Any comments by anyone? Any final points or anything like that? No, I've seen there are some few points which uh, some... People with strong burning, you have must have seen people wearing watches. Man, this is when we were talking with Kapil. They will watch wear upside down something because again, you know, Saturn is time basically. Yeah, and that's they... a very good point. So these natives might have a broken watch in their home, a watch showing the bad, a wrong, a wrong time or wrong date or something. That I mean, that that's not good, right? So watch showing the wrong time is like you're ruining a Saturn. Actually, Saturn is not doing well for you. So ideally, you dead the clocks and all that very big problem so usually when clocks are dying in the home someone is about to die you know someone's time is up that's what it usually means actually so of course you need to fix it up very soon and all that that's a typical thing yeah and also some people interested in skull like one i met once Correct. i was in uber and this yeah. driver one or two skulls first of all who keeps skulls and all like he has got keychains of skulls he has had diagrams of skulls he has got pictures in the, in the car i said why are you having so many skulls like so maybe, and I know it may be some Bernie. So I just asked, you know, I became friends with him for some time and asked his birth date and all. And then yeah. I don't remember now, but when I came back, I was looking, he was a strong Bernie character yeah. too. So yeah. these people are interested with skulls and all, yeah. you know. Yeah, skull, of course, I think Saturn is also, uh, you know, uh, Saturn is also bones, right? If I'm not mistaken. So then yeah. you can have, is that right, UG? Surya, guys, Suresh, I think really? a lot of the karkas of, of Shani's getting mixed up with Surya. I'm so sorry. But I think okay. it's just, a, yeah, Surya and medical. I I mean, what do we really know? So I don't like to even say anything. I'm just, you guys know me well. I've just, I once I read something, I don't forget. For whatever reason, it's stuck. So uh, the, yeah, the, the Sanskrit text, like if you just want to go by the text, they say Surya's bones. Shani is muscle. Okay, that's what it oh, yeah, says. Right. It doesn't mean yeah. it's true. Okay, we don't right, know. Right, right. right. But that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, I, think I think a but... lot of the karkas of Shani and Surya, I hear like, uh, this was confusing. That's even why I had to ask Dr. Paiji because 
Yeah. If you just know this stuff, then you constantly hear Kal is Surya. You never, I don't even know where I've seen Shani. Somehow this stuff gets, and then you don't know what you're saying. You know? yeah. Like, what do we really <laughs> know? <laughs> so, hearing Kal exiles certain debilitates. So that's why, Correct, you know, yeah, I'm that, yeah. Sun Surya today. <laughs> yeah. Well, one it's, more... it's also, to, sorry, Dr. Paiji. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's also one of those things that I contemplate even saying anything at all because of the factor of how much we don't know. But uh, I'll just say that um, you guys, once again, have known me for so many years. I've constantly said, wait a minute, so many things that are just getting said, I, where do they come from? And then when you test them, they don't work. So like yeah. the Uchanicha, all of this stuff is not necessarily what people think it is. And then yeah. you just get so much of this that I, for me, because I'm more devotion based anyway, so I'm not really attached to the whole rigidity of this is this and this is that. But then I, I start just questioning like, okay, wait, what's what? Because it could be like shunny as anything anyone says. <laughs> and then, and then sorry, but Soria is typically called call out of all the guys. Like that's his name. He's usually, cause you, this is why guys speculation. He never goes retrograde. He never waxes or wanes and he marks the time. He will never go off course. He actually marks the ecliptic. So the other guys either go retrograde or they wax or wane, like the moon. So Surya is the only one that's steady and marks Kal. And he's literally called uh, the Atma of Kal Purush. So see, I just happen to know all this Sanskrit guys. I'm so sorry. So like when I'm listening, I'm going, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know. I so so yeah. As far as bones are concerned, that's typically a Surya thing, um, yeah. all over the texts at least. And right. then uh, he's always structure. See this thing with Shani being structure. I've never seen that either. What I have seen is that Shani is lazy. They don't say structure. They don't say taskmaster. That's correct. Yeah, ever. certainly. They yes. never say he's a taskmaster. Is yeah. now is he a harsh judge in some stories? Yes, but as far as what they say, his qualities, his gunas, his defining features, muscle is not structure. Muscle is strength. Mm. And what strength is is tolerance, patience. Okay slowness like the ability for the body to tolerate something is muscle see that is very different than bone that's very different than structure now they might seem like they work together of course the entire body does but this is where it gets hard to actually give definitive teachings of any kind because um, I have heard, like, I can barely talk to anyone about Rahu or Ketu because I'll hear this random weird stuff. And I'm like, I don't know if I've even seen that happen in a chart, but everyone keeps repeating it. And so then you just feel like, I don't know what's left from right. I don't know anything. I'm just going to keep doing my mantras. I don't know. Anything. But what is the skull? The skull is for Bharni, we can say or not? Yeah, I think it can be said, right? Yeah. So skull is of the head and all that, yeah. One thing I was, skull, skull yeah, one yeah. thing I was going to say to you guys is, you know, like, um, just for students who are trying to learn, that's, all, that's why I'm asking some questions all that, because I know how much Vidya each one of you have, and it's deep, because, you know, we know each other, and I know we can just banter, right? Um when we're going into things like nakshatras in like Purva, Falguni is technically the having of children. That's right. That's technically, right. it is the sexual act. It, it literally is represented by a woman on top of a man doing that. That's literally right. what it is. There's no subtlety. They didn't have that right. shame, right? Why right. shame? If what shame and humility. Uh, I don't, I think they're opposite ends of the spectrum. I think if we're very humble about what human life is, then there's no shame in saying what human life is, right? It's full of life and death. It's, it's full of, it's a, it's a beautiful mess, right? So in Korva Falguni, we have the actual act of that 
taking place. And in Barney, there's a lot of reference. And once again, guys, you have to know, I'm like, the, I think I'm the nerd here, um, where I just happen to have all this stuff here, the Sanskrit. It's very commonly referred to with Barney as the menstruation, because that's a funeral. Yeah. Right. That's a funeral for the egg that didn't get fertilized. Okay. Uh, okay. And, but it is also the birth process because of reincarnation itself. So it, it's heavily linked with death still. That's the thing is up a Barney Shakti actually literally means to remove something. It's, it's removing the uh, prana from the body to make it cold technically what it's doing is removing the agni how you right. define a um a dead body is it's cold the agni the right. furnace is gone so right. you'll see yeah. a lot of this is up a barney but no pregnancy see this is can be confusing to students because mm -hmm. everything yeah. you guys said is correct it's nothing like that. It's it's there. But when you go to make these distinctions, then how do you do it? Because you have Porvafoguni, which is that. Then you yeah. have Barney, which is that. So Barney, for the students that are trying to make that distinction, it's more linked with the taking away of life or taking mm -hmm. away the light of life and the putting of the light of life in a womb and trapping it in a body. That's it. The restraint, because the female reproductive is full of restraint. It's all muscle. It's a tiny, tiny little place that life comes out. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, it's almost, it's almost a, um, it's a miracle of some sorts. It's the most otherworldly thing you can imagine. It, think about it. You're like giving, it, something's coming out of another body. It's it, when you really think about it. Um, and that that area is interesting. Saturn is muscle. It is it's all that. And then right. is this, like this this kind of smooth muscle, whatever it is. But it, it does it restrains and holds life inside of it. And then the muscles literally push it out. So it's all dealing with that kind of you you have no control. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting factor of Barney. I just want to say those features yeah. of Barney, we have no control. Birth, death, these, this is where your free will is. I was really meditating on many things you guys said. I was deeply listening. When Dr. Paiji started talking about Itcha Shakti, I thought it was so fascinating because that's willpower. Like he said, it's that creative force. And I was just thinking, oh my goodness, Barney actually defeats that. It must be that itself. Its will is more powerful than the human's will. Because the, the human cannot will another minute to their life. I mean, there's rare scenarios. Okay, we hear these stories, but they're considered rare miracles. Most of us are going to go out when that it, when the time the clock is up. And it might be a relief. See, it might be freedom. And then you, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe we don't know for sure, but those of us who have tasted death at all could probably speak to the fact that you may not want to come back in here. This thing to this, once again, the head, get rid of the head, <laughs> get rid yeah. of the thing is the limitation. Everyone thinks it's the infinite thing, but no one wants to come back to this thing if they lose it. Okay. So, so you're taken out it's not like willpower <laughs> the barney itself what dr paiji said was really profound i was really thinking about it because i was going oh yeah this is where you are losing your something else is expressing its will upon you in birth and death is so so when we're talking about barney and yama um and even how we had that weird segue about the time and the Rahu column, that was really fascinating when Dr. Paiji was saying that, because once again, where what did we do the mantra for? For Yama, Dakshina, Dikpati is the directional Lord of the South. And Dr. Paiji brings this rare knowledge, which doesn't sound like anything we've heard. I mean, at least we've talked about. Um, and it's dealing with Rahu. I mean, all these things have been very significant. 
but then you've got to make the distinction. Then they're going to have it. So Barney, interestingly, um, I would just say that for those studying, the reproductive element is really, really powerful in Barney. But one thing in one of my slides, um, if you guys took screenshots or I can put my the PDF on my website if guys want it, if you miss something, maybe I'll, ju I'll just do that, okay? Just for anyone who's really that interested. Um, in Yamalok, in Yamapuri, there is a mandir for every disease. Right. Okay, so they're celebrated like a, a divinity. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, what's good for one isn't good for another. To Yama, maybe a disease is good because it's, it's right. helping his job. So we might not like it, but we're so, um, you know, so anyway, uh, if you think about it that way, you will see a lot of gynecological, uh, gynecological problems. Um, issues, problems with the womb, uh, problems with the menstrual cycle, or in a very distinct relationship with the menstrual cycle. And remembering for a menstruating female, that is a form of a funeral. Dr. Laud is famous for saying that. He, he would say that in, in Ayurvedic class. He said that so many times. I didn't come up with that. He would say it's a funeral for the you know, the one that didn't get fertilized. So I'm now, seeing I'm seeing a lot of people with abortion rights and all this. Have, maybe. Yeah, have See that Barney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Barney, that, I've, I've just tested two, three charts now. Yeah, oh, okay. See, that makes more sense because uh, I was trying to draw uh, the distinction there between the procreative porvaldoni yeah. and the um actual you know, Porva Falduni perhaps even has more willpower available to the individual because of Bhaga and because of the difference of the Devata, whereas Dr. Paiji's point about Itcha Shakti might be dead on, that this Nakshatra is that the actual Shakti that deals with some kind of will. Maybe it's not our independent <laughs> Itcha Shakti, but it is something to do with um but maybe people born under it do have an extra dose of that will you know so this is the things we have to think about like what is what is coming into play here birth and death you are subjected most of the time in very rare scenarios and so um interestingly people fighting for control over their body like abortion fighting for that control that's interesting because yogis if you think about i saw so many yogis with this barney moon i mean krishna macharya most likely has a barney moon one time it sets him into kritika but uh same thing with Iyengar. um oh, many of these guys are barney um and a lot of them will have makara with it Almost every yogi I've done the chart for has had strong makara. I mean, even down to Baba Ram Das, like he has a lot of makara. So um, you'll see this combo, interestingly enough, in these guys quite a bit, at least one planet in makara. Very odd. I just spot codes like that. Um, but uh, Barney, it, it, it is interesting. If yogis are having it, what are yogis doing? They're gaining control over themselves. So back to this willpower <laughs> and back to this almost supernatural element of wanting... Um... Other thing which you say, you know, EJ, I would like to point, because now you have to un clear the confusion between the Barni and the Dhanishta. You know, Dhanishta also, we say child loss and all those things. So now... Abortion. Okay, we got, yeah, we got uh, Purva, Falguni and Barni, but how we will say Barni difference than Dhanishta in terms of this? Well, the Nishta tends to, it almost uh, almost seems to somehow make a repetition of losing the children. It would, please, we don't want to be scaring people. This doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. This guy's listening to this. This doesn't happen all the time. Something different is going on with Dinishta. It's, it's where Mangal is Ucha. 
And uh, in Ayurvedic texts, they always pray to Karthikeya and Mangal to for a Kalam Ritu, like don't take my children, don't kill the child in the womb, don't kill the child in this. And, and that's what you'll see a lot of this with the Kritika Nakshatra, the Nishta, even though there's Bhishma story, for whatever reason, these stories seem to play out in our lives. So it might even be the parents of the Danisha native too. So you just have to do a study on it. Barney, I'm not so sure I would even relate to necessarily um, always abortion. That's such a private matter, by the way, to just like start speaking on it. But may, perhaps people who fight for the rights. See, Dr. Paiji's point, I'm kind of hinging on. It was pretty brilliant with Itcha Shakti because fighting for justice, that's forcing the will, you know? Um, fighting for rights over your body when someone else is uh, taking the charts which I tested were the activists who are fighting. For That's what I'm wondering. If it's the people that want to fight is now legalize abortion. So and in talking like a topic like this, you're going to have about five people comment saying I'm Barney and I've had this happen. But that doesn't mean we're not going to look at fifty charts and every nakshatra. Uh, uh, women have abortions. Women have miscarriages. Women. With things like this, we have to be really careful and make sure the statistics line up. But you can make sense of certain things if you see them over and over. For instance, I'm going to, all of you guys, I'm very serious, have had really brilliant, subtle points tonight that just kind of clicked. Like even with Sandeep G was saying about the Uttar Falguni, um, my grandmother has been celebrated in the city that I'm from for preserving cemeteries. She took my mom and her sisters to cemeteries when they were young. Okay, so my mom tells the story. But um, my my grandmother was married to an Uttar Faguni. My grandfather was an Uttar Faguni. She's a Barini. And they preserved cemeteries together. Okay. So, I mean, this was, this literally ended up playing out. Uh, okay. So, so it's interesting when someone says something, listen, even if you think you, you know, that you, you, oh, I don't know how that is. That's why I didn't even want to say anything about the Surya with the bones or just because we read it doesn't mean it's true. You know, so I'm always, I know this stuff, <laughs> That's but that doesn't mean it's true. We should always be willing to learn. But yeah, fighting for rights is a big Barney thing. I, now that, the whole thing with Barney, I've seen hyper creative people. Now that is true, very, very creative people. So Porva Falguni and Barney both share this big burst of creative energy, definitely in different ways, but sometimes almost in a similar way. They both can be dancers, for instance. I've seen so many dancers under both Barani and Porva Falguni. So they both can be really good dancers, things like that. So you will see this. Uh, um, it's interesting because Yama is called Kal, and all the dance arts are called Kal. It's Kala and Kala. It's you just move the uh and ah uh around. And usually in Sanskrit, when words do this, they have a similar relationship. <laughs> and if you look at the dance of life, you look life is a drama. <laughs> it, in, in so many ways, it is a drama. It is a dance. It is, a, it's intricate. And um, so I don't know, I mean, Art is such a big part of, of life and, and the expression of the soul. I, I just, Barney and Porva Falguni both have this very strong, but you will, the, the point is you'll see different, whatever people are referring to as karma palam. So this karma pala will play out differently according to Porva Falguni because it's going to affect partnership more. It doesn't always affect the womb as much the actual uterus or the reproductive organ. I mean, it could, see, once again, you have to be careful with these black and white things. But um, Barney definitely has a lot of these karmas with this uh, reproductive, um, the, the cycle, the menstrual cycle. I hear this on a constant basis throughout my years of doing Jyotish. Uh, with female Barney, you will see that play out quite a bit for whatever reason.
And you know a lot of ancient traditions. I, I have seen people, female charts, having strong Libra, three, four planets in Libra. Those female charts I've seen having issues with menstrual cycles. And all. Now that makes sense Not though, because this is Shukra's Mula Tricone. So we do have to remember that some things make sense just because of the simplicity of what they are. Like that is Shukra's Mula Tricone, uh, Tula Rashi. And it is the natural Mula Dara. So, I mean, it, it does have that natural seventh house um, thing. And then to-, to They're also aspecting Bharni, you know? I was going to say to your points that you always, you guys always bring up about the opposites, that is very true. So there's that too, but that, that makes sense. Tula Rashi always has a sensual element to it because of being Shukra's um shukra's home you know so see moon is more related to vrishab and taurus than shukra moon is your first food it's your first nourishment that's second house moon is the face with the indrias that's the second house moon is habits that's the second house so see moon has in early childhood that is the second house and the moon subjects you to however the parents want to treat you. Once again, your will is taken away. So things dealing with birth and death, your will is taken away. And so one of the big features of birth and death is you're helpless. Most of the time you're completely, at least what we see as helpless. They're once again, extraordinary scenarios, but most of us are pretty subjected. Okay, so moon tends to subject us. I know everyone talks about the moon being emotional. That doesn't really work in Jyotish, guys. I'm really sorry. I mean, you'll think you're reading someone, but you might just be psychic. You have to watch out. You have to look at if you're really looking at the detail and be honest with yourself. Am I just psychic or am I really seeing this? Because the more you look at the moon, what you're going to see is people tend to be very subjected to whatever the moon does, like they're subjected to birth. Um, so same thing. This is just through my research. I could be wrong. And I'm happy to be wrong. As I, I have nothing to gain from being right. <laughs> It's a losing game here, guys. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy with the losing hand. So, but, you know, just, just in case students are really trying to make distinctions, I would say all of you guys, Look at nakshatras that have these similar themes, and then you're going to start seeing the few defining features that are there. And they're usually not personality features like people assume. They'll be actual events that come through yeah. a person's life. Like marriage, and marriage or not marriage tends to be such a huge theme with the Falgunis. Um, you know, no marriage or marriage and children. Like it's a theme somehow. Um, so you'll notice the theme of the Falgunis, and then you have the, they're the birth star Brihaspati in, in many of the mantra shastras, uh, mantra, like the shlokas, you, you'll see this, like it'll go, oh, Brihaspati is born in Porva Falguni or Uttara, usually Porva, Porva Falguni, Mangal sometimes can be born in Porva Falguni or Porva Shara, but it's usually Brihaspati. He's born in Danishna and Porva Falguni. They'll say this over and over, those two stars. Um, so, so you had to think about that too. Whereas Ra, Ra who's born in Barnes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I will have to drop off because the family is waiting for. Uh, oh, dinner. yes. I'm, it's also late. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, yeah. I think we'll just uh, call it the end, actually. So, thank you, Dr. Pai. And thank you, Aditya. And, uh, Dr. Uh, thank no, you, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll just uh, drop off, uh, but you guys can carry on with, uh, you know, with this. You had a point, so, Dr. Pai. Something you had to say? Or... No, no, no. It was uh, very quickly, I will make uh, one point, which I liked what, um, you know, Santip was saying. And what even Eve was saying, I wanted to add one more point before I leave because they're waiting. Uh, okay. Uh, see, in uh, largely in the northern part of India, they worship uh, Kalima. Okay, as you come towards the Kerala, he already showed us that there is a Badra Kali and there is Bhagavati. But if you come to southern part of India, there is a kind of deity 
who is called as a Yellamma. She's also called as a Ikvira Devi. She's also called as a Gangamma or a Mariamma as well. Every village in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala or uh, uh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and western part of uh, Maharashtra will have her temples. Now, who is she? She's Renuka Devi. Now, Renuka Devi, if you understand, also has the same principle that we have already said. Her father, King Renu, didn't have children, so he uh, made a grand sacrifice from which, from the fire, she emerged. Okay, that's point number one. Second thing is, when she was eight years old, Agassi Rishi said, please uh, have her married to Jamadagni. Eight years, again, number eight is very significant. Third is, she had five children. Out of that, the fifth child was Bhargava Rama, who is Parushama. And, you know, Jamadagni asked him to behead his mother, Renuka Devi. Okay, so this beheading concept is coming very strongly uh, with the deities that you are worshipping. So even last point uh, before I go, hard stop, sorry guys. What I liked about uh, EFG's uh, thing is you see there is an elephant there and she has Varah, Varahi which is sitting there. Now Varaha Avatar is who brought up the earth which means probably Mrityu Loka was sinking and there was no need for it, but he said, no, we want this loka and he has brought up. So Varahi is this energy, which is the fertility and the, the strong energies that you see with Varaha Swami, who wanted to bring Mother Earth, which is again the Prithvi Tattva, the fertility, what we're talking about, Icha Shakti. I think just to summarize, I want to say this nakshatra has completely to do with the, the Shakti, which means the 51 Shakti Peters or Sati, Mata Sati and all different forms of Matrikas. So this is mostly, I think, is the culmination of uh, the powerful energies of uh, creation because there is nothing that can manifest in, the, in this world without Shakti because she is the physical manifestation. Shakta, which is Shiva, is the unmanifested. So anything that we need to manifest in this world, we need the creative energies, which is you can say it is a procreative energy or a creative energy. So you would say that uh, poets are very, very creative, but poets, you know, like uh, Kali Dasa, Kali Das, which means he is a great devotee of Kali. Even Tenali Rama was said to be have blessed with the, the intellect that he had in Krishna Devaraya's thing has come from Kali Ma. So Bharani Nakshatra is holding intellect, which is a Savitri, which is a, the Saraswati's energy plus Kali's energy. And it can make you very, very creative. Like EG said, you know, all the Venus nakshatras. See, again, Bhargava Rama, he is an incarnation of the sixth avatar, which is connected to Shukra, Venus. Oh, and Vara okay. is linked with Rahu. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys, I have already five phone calls. Uh, I have to go. I have to scoop now. So thank you very much. I will see you guys. Okay. Namaste. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Namaste. Okay, guys. I also have to have... Yeah. So great. So I think we can wrap this up. So thank you, UG and Dr. Aditya Togi for the wonderful the other thing, we last had point was this. Yeah. Butterflies, you know, butterflies. Oh, really? Drawing of butterflies. You have yeah. seen those? Seen with no. the people. Is that I've seen. really? Yeah, Interesting. Talking to a couple of Oh, and then... Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, butterflies do make sense. Cocoon and all that, you know. So they yeah. do have a pupa yeah. stage and all that. And, that and col thing. colors, again, Venus. Yeah. So mm -hmm. makes sense. But in Akshatra natives do have a pregnant thing going on, right? So they at least feel pregnant or whatnot. So makes sense. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. It's a nice Bollywood movie of four hours. <laughs> four hours, <laughs> yeah. Total proper four hours. Great. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Great then. Great.